guys. Oh, it's so good to see everybody here. Welcome, everybody, to the Wolf Den Podcast, and a special hello to our good buddy, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good today. How are you? I'm just great, and I hope everybody else here is good, too. Uh, Kevin's subbing in today for Will on very short notice. I, I could I could have planned this a lot better, but uh, I asked him like uh, just a few hours ago. I, the thought just occurred to me. Will's a little busy. He just had a baby on Sunday. Uh, surprise. So uh, he's 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 out and give him a little break. He needs it. Uh, so we're yeah, here with you know, Kevin. I, I just uh, yeah. And you gave me a great excuse to not work on an edit that I've been avoiding. So it's just yes. win win <laughs> is really what it is. <laughs> I'm sure everybody here knows Kevin already. Ke- the Kevin Kenson of the Kevin Kenson channel. Me uh, and my inventive names. Oh, yes. I had to make sure I changed the Will Wolf over to Kevin Kenson. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, I want to talk about some of these Pokemon knockoffs we've been seeing uh, very recently. Uh, and Nint- Nintendo already smashed one of them down. We also got to talk about Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is almost out. And we got some... Initial impressions from Japan. Uh, I, I guess the embargo is still still going on in uh, in America. I, I haven't seen any any American reviewers talk about it yet. Um, yeah, I haven't seen any official reviews. Uh, I've seen lots of thoughts about it from you know people finding copies. Yes, but, uh, nothing official. I'm sure we'll talk about that. Uh, also, uh, we will talk about again. Activision and Microsoft, because there's a whole bunch more news about that. I just didn't want to make it the main topic for two weeks in a row, because uh, I'm sure you're sick of hearing most of it. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Ocarina of Time's got some fixes on the Switch, uh, um, uh, some Star Wars news and whatever. And video game movie news, believe it or not. Uh, Trep says boy or girl. I don't know if... I Will's very secretive about his family so ask him i don't know if i'm allowed like what i'm allowed i didn't even know if i was allowed to say that he had a baby but he posted about it so i'm 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 i was allowed to say at least that um but anyway before we get into anything we got some notifications to read. We got a man to ask you with 25 months and thank you very much. Hey Bob and Kevin, if you were a type of donut what would you be? If I was a type of donut. Cuz like, I'd be I love a French maple crawler. Bars. I love maple bars, but for some reason like Mexican hot chocolate popped in my head. I don't know. It's just, Is that a donut? Sound you can, you can make that a donut. Look, man, I'm in Southern California. We got bougie donuts everywhere for any kind of flavor. Like, <laughs> That's true. Anything could be a donut if you really if you really tried hard enough. You believe. I'm drinking a little cold brew I made. Uh, I put in it, uh, I have orange like flavored syrup and, uh, and a little bit of like cocoa powder. So it's like an orange chocolate cold brew and oat milk. Um, it's Tasty. okay. Uh, who else we got? We got Swoopy Girl with 10 months. Thank you very much. Trep with 14 months. Cisco Yeeted with 17 months. Luabic with 11 months. Congrats to Will on the new Wolf Pup. Since he was born on my subversary, I think legally his middle name has to be Luabic. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in court. Uh, Frankenberries or Bust. Thank you for the five months. Congrats to Will to make some Bezo Bucks. Thank you so much. Uh, Oh, take some Bezo books. Pink Panther Beekeeper. Thank you for the three months. Bob, you are my favorite vegan. You shut up. You shut your damn face right now. Anyway, now we could talk about news. Uh, anyway, this first one. This I saw a few days ago. Uh, this was a Pokemon first person shooter. Did you see this one? This is not Power World. Yeah, this is not pow. This is uh, I I saw a little bit of it. I didn't watch any of the like extended stuff, but I've seen a lot of uh, gifs and short videos and stuff on Twitter, of just people sharing how ridiculous this looks. Now this one is literally Pokemon. There are Pokemon in it, and you have a gun and you you shoot Pokemon in the face. They come at you and you shoot them. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, uh... I, I'm sure that they knew that they, something was going to happen, that they were going to get smacked down. Uh, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so this, uh, it's a Reddit user dragon underscore game dev two. He's been working on a side project, uh, side project, imagining a PC Pokemon game built using Unreal Engine, of course, that you played in first person. While your thoughts may now be drifting towards something resembling Pokemon Snap, Dragon underscore game dev two had more violent plans for this game. He instead showed off some videos where players were dropped into Pokemon filled landscape, given modern firearms and set free to hunt and defend themselves from as many of, of the pocket monsters as they liked. While it was a little jarring seeing someone empty a whole clip into an innocent little Pokemon, complete with blood effects, the basic premise of Pokemon Cross FPS was still exciting enough for people that shortly after Dragon underscore Game Dev 2 posted some of the clips of Project Online, uh, they blew up. Uh, and as we all know, when Nite when something a Nintendo fan does blows up, Nintendo loves to respond with thanks, admiration, and respect. Just kidding. They got most of his videos taken down. Even tweets highlighting the clips have had the footage removed. One of the only places you can still see the game in action, at least where the guy uh, themselves uploaded it, is on Reddit. I think it's interesting that Kotaku here decided to put the, the, the video. I guess they only put a GIF, but like they're like, hey, this is getting taken down everywhere. Let's just put it on our website. Yeah, I also love... I mean, I, I understand the tone a little bit, and it is very frustrating all the times so that there's been cool fan projects that, you know, Nintendo shuts down. I feel like this one's maybe a little more like, like, even if Nintendo was a bit more gracious when it comes to the situation, this is kind of one of the times where probably not, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just like, you know, hey, look, we just can't have, we can't have you shooting them. Like, it's a little, like, you got, you got Nido King covered in blood. I just, it's not, it's kids, man. <laughs> so in, thi in this case, it's, yeah, it's straight up, uh, those are Pokemon that you are shooting. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the article goes on to note that uh, they say, just for the record, in case you never realized that legal teams work harder than just checking P Kotaku, we didn't post about the project. So they're basically saying it's not our fault that this thing got taken down. We didn't draw attention to it because that's a lot of times when uh, anybody reports on uh, Nintendo taking down a project, people in the chat or in the comments inevitably go, yeah, well, you shouldn't have talked about it. You should have kept it hush hush. Um, but in this case, uh, it was probably Reddit that uh, and, and people tweeting about it that ended up getting it taken down. I mean, the, the internet's the internet. If something like that is going to be popular, like anything that's going to be receptive to people, there's not going to be this weird unspoken agreement across the entire internet where it's like, guys, don't talk about it. Like, don't let Nintendo, don't let them know. Like, that's not <laughs> that's not how this works. <laughs> yes. Now, now uh, also of note, this is reminding me, there is a Mario first-person shooter. It's basically Mario... Si oh, wait, no, this isn't 64. There's one that is Mario 64 that is just a shooter. Uh, this is a different one. Oh, this is, again, in Unreal Engine. I wonder if it's the same guy. Uh, but this is still up. I, I, it's interesting that Nintendo doesn't care about this one. Yeah, I mean, maybe it just didn't blow up as hard on the internet. I mean, to be fair, it is at least, like, a little more thematically on point with, oh, like, they just got hit. I mean, that's gun. That's a, that's a gun gun right there. So this, yeah, this, <laughs> so this is, is a, a different more... one. That last one was an Unreal Engine thing. This is friggin mario 64 and it looks like mario 64 but you just have a friggin desert eagle <laughs> and i assume a bunch of other this is an alpha rad video uh from what i've seen you have a bunch of different weapons uh but it looks like he's just using a freaking desert eagle it looks like CS:GO or something um so yeah i've never played this one but i i am willing to give this one a shot uh the pokemon one that one just looked like you were shooting Pokemon. This one looks like it had some actual gameplay in it. Yeah, just anyway. a different take on the old levels. Yeah. Just, you know, you have a gun instead of jumping on people. It's a little more efficient. <laughs> so that was uh, the Pokemon first-person shooter. That wasn't even... I don't even think there was a download link. I think it was just footage. It was just footage of the game that Nintendo took down because I guess they were like, we don't want the image of our Pokemon with blood all over their faces. But uh, this is another one that is an actual game that will be coming out. This is Pal World. You might have heard of Pal World. It's the weird Pokemon looking knockoff 
that has guns and third person shooting elements and, and stuff. They they have a second trailer now. And oh boy, is it a doozy. I uh, haven't seen this yet. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't want to like play music or anything. Uh, and we're probably going to have to narrate over this. So there's at least a little bit of uh, <laughs> something Commentary. for the podcast listeners. Yeah. Um, well, I mean... Okay, this one at least jumps in right away to showing you, like, shooting the Palmon or, like, riding them to fire at other ones. Because I remember the first trailer was very, like, oh, yeah, this is just another Pokemon. Like, this is a cool-looking 3D Pokemon. And then at, like, the minute mark, it's all of a sudden, now shoot them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now guns. Kill everybody. <laughs> but this one also takes a few turns. Like, it start, like it starts off right off the bat, you know they got guns. And then it shows you, like, the Pokemon elements with the with the Pokeball, and now you're, like, riding Pokemon and stuff. There's and like a then, fusion mechanic, it looks like. There is a fusion mechanic. Uh, and then they're, they're right back in with the guns, baby. And then it gets dark. <laughs> you get to see the weird sort of like uh, sweatshop looking like slavery uh, uh, an arms deal inside a Pokemon. Vicious Pokemon. A Lapras just ate a penguin, basically, is what that looked like. <laughs> Use Pokemon uh, as rocket launch or grenade launchers. The the thing about this game too, though, is that like I can't tell looking at all of this what is even actually the overall direction of the game, right? Like, what are you actually <laughs> doing? Because it's such a mixture of like uh, make them make weapons or walk around shooting them or like it's such a there's so many disparate parts that don't fully make sense to me right now. Like yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and, and whenever i inevitably like whenever i tweet about this i tweeted about the first trailer and now i'm tweeting about the second trailer whenever i sh like tweet about it and show it people inevitably say i wish pokemon would would have more game mechanics in it or or, or this is what pokemon should do and that blows my fucking mind that people that people could look at that and be like this looks like a good game because nothing about this screams to me like, like, oh, I need to play this. It looks like a ton of different game mechanics that are like haphazardly just slammed together and none of them are going to be good. But it's like an engaging, right? Because there's a part of you that's like, <laughs> what is this? Like, what? Like, I just need to know. Yeah, yeah like a it's train like, wreck. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, because like, I can't even imagine like just reading a review or something being enough to get across what all this is like it, it's like when you hear about a really bizarre b movie from the 70s or something you're like look i just gotta i gotta see this for myself like i just gotta right. sit through it i gotta see sean connery and the speedo and zardoz it's just the only <laughs> way to properly you know experience whatever this is <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to. I don't like. I listen. I do not want to play this game, but I do want to see other people play this game. I want to see. I want to see like a good like couple of minutes of gameplay, and I want somebody else to do a review, and that'll make some for some good entertaining content. But I don't think there's any way this is going to be like remotely good. And and I wonder if they released this, uh, knowing that Arceus is in two days. Oh, absolutely days. right. Yeah, yeah, it's but, like a. What was the timing where Sora was announced right after the Nickelodeon fighter launched, or like on the day of? Yeah, <laughs> that same kind of thing. Well, when did they release the? They might have released the last trailer around. Uh, wait, I, did they release it around the same time? Uh, uh, Pokemon, uh, uh, Brilliant Diamond was announced because I think they did it in a way where everybody was upset about pokemon so then they released their trailer and everyone was like look at this now look at how different and cool it is yeah it might have been during the brilliant diamond thing it might have also been close to when pokemon snap was released because i feel like there was something about like the first person view yeah i think you're right though yeah it definitely was timed with something i don't remember the date that trailer went up but you know what i think right i'm also thinking of temtem because temtem i know was announced uh right when people were upset about something with Pokemon that like there was a Pokemon trailer that came out and people were like, Oh, they didn't, they didn't move the, the, they didn't like move anything forward. Every like, like Pokemon still Pokemon. They barely did any work in this. Uh, and then Temtem, you know, they released a trailer and everyone was like, Oh my God, this is what Pokemon should be. And then Temtem came out and then people immediately stopped playing it. 
yeah that i remember i i actually never tried tempted myself but i had a few friends that jumped in and it seemed like everyone was all about it for about a week mm -hmm. and then it just kind of fizzled yeah partially because i think it was the kind of situation where it was like an early release kind of deal and they were going to add more content but the rate the content was being added didn't keep up with how fast people were completing what was already there oh uh, and I feel like, especially Pokemon-style games, there's like a momentum, right? It's like, if you've ever played an RPG and you get halfway through and then stop, picking that back up is not exactly the easiest or simplest thing. You're like, what was I building? Why did I have this guy in my team? I don't even remember this dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I also never play. See, here's the thing. I don't really... Like, I've always said that I like Pokemon because of the cute characters and stuff. I'm not an RPG guy. So, like, Pokemon kind of made me care about RPGs um, until very recently. Like, very recently, I decided I just don't like Pokemon. <laughs> I think it was it was after I played Brilliant Diamond. I was like, you know what? I just think I'm not into this. Like, I was uh, the last Pokemon game that I, I enjoyed uh, Pokemon Sword. Uh, until I beat the main story. And then when I did the DLC, I was like, I didn't really need to go back and do the DLC. Uh, and then, and then yeah. thinking back about it, I, I, I realized like, maybe I didn't actually like Pokemon sword. <laughs> yeah. You know, Pokemon for me is this, like, it's almost like a ritual. Like I don't, I, the last time I remember really, really liking a Pokemon game was like heart gold, soul silver. I liked black and white too as well, but like heart gold, soul silver for me was like the peak. And I would say probably every release after that, like X and Y, Oros, Sun and Moon, all of those, it it's like a habit. It's like, all right, cool. Like, I'm going to pick my starter. I'm going to build a team from, like, whatever's in this region. I'm going to beat the Elite Four. Call it a day. You know, catch a legendary. All right, cool. Like, it's it's like comfort food in a weird way, but, like, not great. Right. You know? it, yeah. It's kind of how it feels. Yeah. I, uh... I have I have high hopes for uh, for Arceus because it's at least like way different. I, I I just feel like lately, especially with like Brilliant Diamond, it like like everybody has been saying recently that that the Pokemon Company doesn't really care about the the games they've been releasing. They've just been kind of like lazily throwing them out there. There was the whole controversy about the trees in Pokemon uh, uh, Sword and Shield. And at the time, I was like, that's so stupid. Who gives a shit about the trees? It's just, it's going to be a good game. Everybody loves Pokemon. It's going to be good, whatever. But then the game came out, and I was like, maybe they might be right about that. <laughs> and then Pokemon Di Brilliant Diamond came out, and I was like, I felt like one of those guys. I was like, why are the animations weird? This is an ugly game. Why, why, why do I have to mash A the whole time? Couldn't they have sped that up a little bit? They could have done a lot more quality of life stuff if they put some more time into this thing. Yeah, I actually didn't hate the visual direction for Billion Diamond. Part of me was like, oh, it's cool. It's like they took the old style but made it, you know, just chibi 3D. That didn't really bother me. I think the problem I had with Billion Diamond and Shining Pearl is that for me, Pokemon Platinum was actually like my reintroduction to Pokemon. Like, I, I you know, as a little kid, loved Red and Blue, played Gold and Silver. I just missed third gen entirely. Just, I don't know, growing up, I just didn't pick them up. Uh, and so Platinum was when I started playing again, and I loved it. And it's really bizarre to have a remake remaster, which I guess part of the logic was, oh, well, we want it to be faithful to Diamond and Pearl. But they did that by not having any of the changes or updates or additions that Platinum had. Which is weird, because <laughs> like, that's what they've done with the other remasters, right? Like, yeah. The Harkle Silver had content from Crystal. Uh, Oros had some stuff from Emerald. So like, it was really bizarre that the past remakes had that kind of, we're going to adopt all the final version updates and then also add on top of that. And this one was like, nah, delete it all. We're going back square one. Do it. Yeah, yeah it it's, legit it's seemed like a co like a weird sort of copy and paste when like you have like 20 years of like game design advancements that you could have done something with. Yeah. Like I, I don't always agree with the, I always feel like just saying, oh, well, they're being lazy is dismissive. I, I, I It's just, I don't know. I feel like there's a better nuanced argument to have than just say that i just don't right. feel like it's a constructive critique but there's definitely something in terms of what the priorities are and i mean also brilliant diamond shining pearl is a weird situation because it was outsourced it wasn't actually like the traditional team working on it uh yeah it's a weird thing but arceus is i mean the reactions i've been seeing from some of the early people just to kind of go a little more optimistic <laughs> right now uh, <laughs> i you know the stuff i've been seeing and hearing uh it, it's sounding a lot more compelling and interesting to me Yes. 
what we had so far. I'd like to backtrack and say that I actually do like the visual style of of a brilliant diamond, but I don't like some of the like weird animations and stuff. <laughs> there are some weird visual things that I don't like, but I the chibi style when they announced it, I was like, that's pretty sick. I'm down with that. And then I played it and I was like, I don't know, some things are weird with this game. <laughs> but anyway, Arceus seems like they're changing it up in a way that I'm super down for because I'm also like you're you're a big RPG guy. I am not at all. I don't like I don't even like turn based combat like at all. So uh, being able to like the control the character while you're doing combat is like right up my alley. I'm down for that. Um, yeah. The, the reactions. Punched- yes. <laughs> the reactions I've been seeing uh, are positive. I, I, I'm a little skeptical, though, because I assume that the people who are uh, giving those reactions are mostly huge Pokemon fans because they uh, they took the time to get the game early, maybe spent a lot of money on eBay or something. At least one person I saw got, got theirs on eBay. Um, Austin John has, like, five copies. Uh, but, yeah, he got his, like two weeks ago he got his like way early um but yeah from what i've seen from those people the reception has been uh relatively positive yeah which is good because i mean even it's you know it's one thing to be like oh it's all the hardcore pokemon fans that got it early but also i feel like hardcore pokemon fans are some of the biggest critics of pokemon that's true it's like star wars fans star wars fans hate star wars the most yeah, like when we were talking about Sword and Shield earlier, right? I feel like it's all the hardcore Pokemon fans were like, oh, here's everything they're doing wrong and here's why it's BS. Meanwhile, yeah. any person who's just like, oh, yeah, Pokemon looks cool. We're like, this is fun. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, I, I, I've i been seeing mostly positive stuff as well. I haven't necessarily read lots of in-depth things because I do want to try and go in with like my own uh, just kind of clear head and experience. I tend to try to avoid reading too many reviews and stuff beforehand right. because... I don't want to like tint my perspective going in, um, but I I do like that it looks like this is something that's going to be an interesting change of pace. I mean, even just what they've shown from the early previews and trailers, the the whole combat thing with like power and agility style, I think it's called or something like that. Like, there's neat ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, uh, I also don't usually like reading much of anything before I get in into a game, so I can have my own opinion, but. We need content for the podcast. So here we go, baby. Japan's press have played Pokemon Legends. It's an experience like no other. See, that's another reason why I'm kind of comfortable reading this stuff. Because, like, that's pretty excessive. And I do not buy that. <laughs> it technically doesn't mean good, though. That could that's vary. true. There's, been, there's some very bad stuff I've played that is like no other. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> anyway, this is from Video Games Chronicle. A number of Japanese video game websites have been posting their first impressions of Pokemon Legends Arceus uh, following a recent hands-on event in Japan. Do you say Arceus? How do you pronounce it? I I didn't until now because whatever, there was a trailer or something where they pronounced it. I think in my head I always said Arceus. It's one of those fun things where you play games that are usually just text and then the moment you actually have to pronounce something, you go, wait, wait, is that right? <laughs> I think they've been saying Arceus in like the recent trailers because that threw me off. In Japanese, it's Arceus, but I'm just not going to, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, but I mean, it's, that would make sense then that if you're going to put it in English that you would keep the, you wouldn't change it suddenly to a S sound. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's probably I mean, There are some weird translations, but. Right. I'm trying to find the actual, somebody link, somebody copy and paste in the chat the hiragana and I'll, or the katakana and I'll, I'll read it later. Um. I think also, I think they pronounce it out loud in like the first trailer or something. And I feel like that's when people went, wait, it's Arceus. Because I, I think I remember <laughs> that being a thing on Twitter. Everyone was like, I've been saying this wrong for how long? So, so yeah, people in the chat were literally just arguing about how it's pronounced. Uh, I thought it was R R C S. It's, it's, well, oh, oh, no, it, it's, it's whatever you want it to be. It's a new made up word. Uh, until they say it in the game, it's whatever you want it to be. Uh, Aru say don't don't give me that. You're you're lying to me. You made that up. <laughs> I want to see a Bulbapedia article right now. Anyway, uh, 
Famitsu praised the game for moving the Pokemon series in a new direction, saying it's safe to say that this game is completely different from previous titles. Okay, well, that's not news at all. <laughs> we knew it was going to be different anyway. Um, the first thing that impressed me when I started playing was the exhilarating feeling of moving around freely in the vast field. Okay, well, that's also like not saying anything. <laughs> it's report... Also praised uh, the way Pokemon could be found freely roaming around each area and the excitement in wondering which species would be encountered each time uh, they reached a new one. The ability to ride Pokemon was also uh, uh, commended with Famitsu's reporters saying it made traversing the open world more exciting, especially when using a flying type Pokemon. I found uh, uh, S. Marcy found the Bulbapedia. Oh my God. It's Aduceus. Adu Siasu. Adu Seasu. That is how I was saying it before. I thought there was something about, like, during a major trailer or something, they said Arceus, though, and that's why the argument kind of came up. I can't be wrong. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, he, he, here's the official Pokemon website. Pokemon. I can't read any of this shit. <laughs> you also get into a weird area, though, where, like, translations sometimes don't actually follow the way it should be pronounced right. from the original. I know one of the ones that's a really big pet peeve for me is uh, in Fire Emblem, uh, the first game, the original game, which we didn't get initially, uh, the, like, lead princess character in Japanese is Shida. In European localizations that came out later, like when they did Shadow Dragon, her name was Shida. For whatever reason, U.S. version, Kaeda, like C-A-E-D-A. <laughs> that is not the same. Not remotely. I have no <laughs> idea why it's like that, but that's what I'm saying, right? Like, even if the original Japanese is supposed to be like Aruseus, that doesn't necessarily mean that the translation team, for whatever reason... I mean, given this is a game that's come out more recently when we're a little more aware of, uh, you know, translations and being able to check out the source material, but I don't know. It's weird. I mean, growing up, I used to always call Ryu Ryu, and f the the I would call it a Haiduken, and I said that in a video once by accident, and I got flamed for it. <laughs> and you still say Mario, so that's and, it's all over the place. Mario! You know, I was... Uh I was with Wood yesterday. We went to a uh, 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 a freaking uh, 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 game store in Pennsylvania, and they brought up that some people behind the counter were just talking about how how to pronounce Mario, and they were saying Mario in Pennsylvania with an A, like a, like a, ah, like Mario. But there was like an old like kind of Italian sounding guy behind the counter who was like, "Hey, what are you talking about? It's got to be Mario." I felt very validated that day. So empowered. Oh, right. hell yeah. I skipped out of there. Anyway. <laughs> uh, where was I? Oh, it feels great just to be able to fly freely in the sky. And it's especially fun to look for Pokemon that look small below you. It said. So I guess you can. Not only can you ride Pokemon around, you could like walking. You could fly. You could take them to the sky. Um. Fumitsu also detailed the boss battle against an angry Cleavor, which attacks the player. Okay, I don't need to. That sounds like spoiler territory now. Um, Game Watch also delivered a positive preview, saying the ability to ride Pokemon strongly matches the world view, making you feel more like you are adventuring in the Pokemon world, which I personally found to be an excellent system. All right. I didn't know we were going to talk about politics here. <laughs> it also celebrated the way the more traditional Pokemon battle system is integrated into the open world gameplay. The system, which successfully combines the action of this title with traditional Pokemon battles, is highly accomplished, and I especially appreciate the fact that Pokemon battles are a means to an end, which fits the worldview of the game, it said. I don't like that they keep saying worldview. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't fit right. It's an interesting choice. For yes. 
In addition, since you are directly attacked by Pokemon in this game, you will feel a great sense of tension when you discover a tough Pokemon. It concluded, what was particularly impressive in this experience was the construction of the world. I was impressed by the way the same po old Pokemon battles were blended into the new and innovative action without any sense of discomfort. It's a game experience like no other <laughs> in the series. Oh, well, they're okay. And I have high hopes for it as a completely new form of Pokemon game. Like no other in the series makes a little more sense. When you say like no other, it sounds like they meant like any game ever. Yeah. Which even that, I mean, this is a slightly interesting, t I can't think of too many things that have a sort of open world mix with raising Pokemon, but I, I'm also entire, not entirely sure what the vibe for like the open world aspect is. It almost feels kind of Monster hunter -y where it's going to specific regions. It's not necessarily like walk from point A to point B and you can go across the map. At least that's my understanding from what I've seen in some of the early trailers and the kind of overviews they've done. Yeah, I heard some people say that uh, it's not fully open world or won't be fully open world or people will be disappointed when they think it's open world and it's really like more like a Monster Hunter style where it like loads another point. Um, I don't know. I'm still very confused about how this game works. I've seen a lot of the trailers uh, and I get a little bit of it, but I'm, I'm still I feel like I'm kind of going even after reading this, I feel like I'm kind of going in blind. Because every time I see something from the game, I feel like I'm learning something completely new. And I'm like, oh, it's like that, huh? Yeah, there's been kind of like how certain wordings in that review were a little vague or like, okay, what does this actually mean? It's mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the coverage has been that, right? Like it gives you an idea, but it's not the clearest one. Uh, so, you know, two people might walk away from hearing the same description and go, oh, wait, I thought it meant this. Or, no, I thought it meant it was going to be like this and it, that kind of situation. Yeah, I feel like we're not going to have a definitive answer until we all play it for ourselves. I uh, like yeah, one big question. Why is this woman doing drugs? <laughs> I've seen that image so much because it's just like that. Yeah, that it's the plan better. Like it could be a flute. But she's holding it weird. <laughs> like that's clearly drugs. Anyway, uh, for gamer says, meanwhile, wasn't oh four gamer was impressed by the way wild pokemon each had their own personalities the pokemon that appear in the game seemed to change depending on the time in the game and at night we saw drifloon and other pokemon it said uh one thing that struck me was that drifloon uh was very belligerent and attacked as soon as it noticed us even if we weren't engaged in a pokemon battle they would charge at the main character without mercy you get the feeling this was the way things were before Pokemon and humans got along. It was also generally impressed by what it had played, saying, uh, there are many new elements in this game, such as the vast world and action, but the game is not difficult to play. And I was impressed by the fact that the best parts of Pokemon, such as completing the Pokedesk and enjoying battles, are still included. Uh, I'm also surprised by that. I also felt that the game portrayed a Pokemon inhabited world more realistically as you can throw a Pokeball and start a battle seamlessly or you can uh, or you can device ways to devise ways to catch Pokemon without battling. This is my first time I've ever read anything. It concludes with, if you've played Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and have explored the Sinnoh region, you'll enjoy this first adventure into the past i can't wait for its release why did they have to bring up the Sinnoh region because it's Sinnoh region in the past oh it was called like this one's called something else isn't it uh hisui i think so hisui turned into the Sinnoh region i think that's the pitch right because that's even supposed to be the same mountain or volcano or whatever's like that's like in the center of uh oh. Sinnoh. The game is set in a bygone era of the Sinnoh region's history. When it was known as the Haisui uh, region, uh, long before the events of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah. See, I'm learning I, every yeah, freaking time I read about this game. <laughs> yeah, and so that's even part of the pitch, right? Is that it was like, instead of doing a proper full whatever remaster remake approach to fourth gen they were like ah we'll do a simpler one and then we're gonna have this game that's like the same region but just goes completely different direction 
So right. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I I'm cautiously excited. I I liked the idea of Pokemon Let's Go because even though people hated the motion controls, I really liked the fact that they did kind of an offshoot game and were able to experiment a little bit and change up the formula because I know diehard Pokemon fans really want specific mechanics th that the series has always had, but I want things to be different. And I'm really happy that there's an offshoot game like this where they can just go wild with it. And and I I, I have I have really high hopes for, for, for this when I play it in, in a few days. Yeah. And that's the really interesting thing too, right? Is that this one's going in such a different direction, it raises the question of, you know, is this a formula we revisit? You know, if it's successful enough, do we just start kind of seeing that become a mainline release every few years or whatever? Because that was even a theory with Let's Go, right? Is a lot of people were wondering if we were gonna get some kind of gold and silver version of that or you know the, a few of the spinoff games have established their own franchises, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see if this becomes some kind of recurring gameplay style, or even if this one evolves further. Yeah, I mean, are they going to take mechanics from this and put it in the next, what is it, uh, uh, Gen 9? I don't know what the next one is. Um, I think Gen 9. 9 sounds right to me. Are they going to take mechanics from this and put it in that? Are they going to just make a, an Arceus 2 or... or, or go to that region in the bygone era i don't know uh but i i hope this is really good and i hope it co it causes some change in in the pokemon company and and maybe they'll uh start uh thinking of reimagining certain aspects of of, of pokemon games like i don't want to just mash a the whole freaking time i'm playing pokemon i want to have to think <laughs> i mean you have to hit like the d-pad up or down sometimes to pick a different move that's you know I usually just pick one move and just whatever the most powerful move is, just plow our house through them with that move. I get one Pokemon that's like jacked as hell, and then that's just it. And that's probably why I don't like Pokemon, because I don't play it right. Probably. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that works for just playing the core content, right? Like, it's not like the series that has any difficulty settings or anything, and usually, especially the most recent ones. I mean, geez, I think with Brilliant Diamond, I just never didn't use my starter like infernape was just enough to handle everything <laughs> yeah I, I i mean i feel like fans make their own difficulty when they do like nuzlocks and stuff um absolutely but i th i really think I, I know nintendo loves doing their own thing and i guess the pokemon company loves doing their own thing like fuck the fans this is what works you don't know what you want we know what you want but when you look at people who play pokemon like on twitch or whatever they do all of these things to improve their experience like they play it in fast forward and maybe they do nuzlocke stuff to make it a little more difficult for themselves um yeah shiny hunting. shiny hunting there's they should be looking at stuff like that and being like okay this is how people play our games how can we now take that and make our games more desirable for them but i guess they're kind of just you know, I mean, they're shooting for the mainstream audience, which isn't exactly the hardcore guys. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff that the hardcore guys do that the mainstream audience would probably get a kick out of. Yeah, there's always that balance point, right? Like aiming for the lowest common denominator in terms of what will be expansively popular, uh, but not necessarily reviewed well, at least by like series fans. Uh, mm -hmm. th there's a way to kind of try to walk that balance, right? And I think where a lot of people get frustrated is that it doesn't feel like they're even attempting to do that. It's just sort yeah. of like, well, let's another one out that's uh, approachable and accessible and uh, XP share is just on by default now. Who cares? You know, like yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was frustrated with brilliant diamond because uh, I was told there are options to like uh, uh, get rid of uh, like, like uh, battle effects and, and make the text a little faster and all of this stuff. But I feel like those have been in this series for a long time and they should they, there's a lot of room for tweaking around there, like uh, like and and the whole game is based in the UI. The whole game is just you navigating UI elements, and they're not good. They're not designed well. <laughs> they yeah. they could have a good UI in the game, and the, the experience would be a lot better all for it.
Oh yeah, I mean UI makes a huge impact, especially for RPGs like that. I mean, a really popular example this recently would be Persona. You know, Persona Five went so out of its way to make every menu the most dynamic, engaging thing. <laughs> You're ultimately still doing the same thing, right? Like right. select attack, select use item, but it's such a visual treat uh, compared to here's the box, here's your little arrow, which thing you picking. Uh, you know, a very different kind of way that energy feels, even though it might take the same amount of time and it's ultimately doing the same activity. Uh, shiny lights make things more fun sometimes. It's just, yes, <laughs> it's true. The, the human eyes need it sometimes. <laughs> uh, Kiki Smee in the chat uh, gave us uh, the pronunciation. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh it's Arceus. Yep, that's the see because I remember that moment happening because I remember right after that happened, me and a lot of other people were like, "Wait, what? Like I've been <laughs> saying this wrong for what? How long has it been since? What, what year was that? Two thousand six? Two thousand? No, later than that. Two thousand eight? I can't remember years they came out, but it's been like over a decade. <laughs> <laughs> and here's I've been saying it wrong in my head. Well, uh, in Japanese, it's aru seiyasu. So, mm. I mean. It just say it however you Shida, want, I guess. Yeah, Shida Kaida. Like I said, like <laughs> just sometimes localization teams make their choices. Uh, Tetra Shot in the chat asked, "How should I get started with Pokemon?" That's a weird question. It's tough too because if you talk to anyone who's like a hardcore fan, they'll tell you which one's their favorite. Best of luck finding an affordable way to play it outside of other options that exist out there. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like. Because what, Red and Blue got re-released on, like, 3DS eShop, right? Red, Blue, and Yellow? Yes. But I would even say, like, I, I feel for me, at least, like, the mid-years are the real peak. Like, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver is so good. And yeah, so... so it's, like, the GBA game and everything. So but, I only played Red and Blue when they came out, and then I didn't play anything until X and Y. And then I played, uh... uh Oh, a son. Um, and then I went back and played Heart Gold uh, because I everybody told me that Heart Gold is the best one, and it what well, it ended up being my favorite one. I actually really like Heart Gold. So if you get an opportunity to play Heart Gold, that's a great game. But good luck. Yeah, I mean, I feel like finding them isn't too difficult. It's finding them at a uh, affordable price. <laughs> yes, is where it becomes an issue. You know, or yes. again, uh, yeah, so. Do a little bit of Googling around. You might be happy with what you find. Um, Until Nintendo announces digital versions we can just buy, in which case do that. Yes. Uh, anyway, we have a bunch of notifications that we missed because we were busy doing a podcast. Uh, where did I leave off? Oh, the guy called me a vegan. M. Jackson for the, with the eight months. Eight months. Woo. Getting close to a year. Thank you, M. Jackson. And Dark Type with 100 bits. Technically, it's pronounced Arc E Us because in the UK, it sounds too close to Arse. Okay. That, that makes actually sense. makes a lot of sense. Yes. <laughs> um, Lou and Mag with 100 bits. Bob, please give Will our congrats. Also, nice to have Kevin again on this podcast. Love your content, man. Thank you. Uh, I also like having Kevin here. He was the first person I asked. Uh, hey. Mimi Memes, thank you for the 19 months. 19, so awesome to see Kevin on the podcast. and It has been great seeing your Nihongo continue to improve. Babu-san, ganbate kudasai. Uh, arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> um, Hector Bizn. With eight, my English has not gotten any better. Uh, thank you for the eight months. Congrats to Will. Regarding Pokemon, I only play it for the competitive. VGC is what keeps Pokemon alive, at least to me. That is what is VGC? I know I've heard of that term. Video I'm game. I'm not into Pokemon that way. Competitive? I community? Pokemon I VGC. Again, I played one for the ritual. Hi. Video game championships. Ah, it's these it's these nerds. <laughs> Look at these fucking guys. <laughs> this one's got these Zapdos on fans. his head. <laughs> I want Zapdos on my head. That looks cool. <laughs> uh, but there was one time I was in Atlantic City for a bachelor party, and 
randomly i saw a sign for the pokemon uh pokemon card game convention and i was like oh it's just here and i happen to be here let's go see what's up and i guess it was free we just walked right in and it was awesome <laughs> it was like a small little like convention it was just like one room uh and it was sick. There was just like a bunch of vendors selling cool Pokemon stuff. And there was people like going nuts playing, uh, like versing each other in Pokemon. There was like 30 year old dudes fighting like little, like, you know, like 15 year old girls. It was very strange. <laughs> anyway, uh, Row Turex with three months. Let's round that to 499 to 500. What are you talking about, Row Turex? probably something we talked about and we we're far removed maybe now. the pokemon pricing i don't think it's that high though yeah, i don't know i don't know or maybe it's maybe it's the price of the sub no you get a prime sub i don't know what you're talking about uh anyway uh that's all the pokemon news we got we unfortunately we're we're gonna have to talk about the activision and microsoft merger because there's been some Recent development since the last time we talked about it. Um, and one big question that gets asked a lot. Uh, yes, there sure is. Uh, why does GameSpot look weird right now? Um, oh, I guess the big, the, the, a lot of this is going to be, yeah, all of this is about what's going to happen with Activision and PlayStation. <laughs> Yep. And specifically, really, when mo most people who are saying that are asking about Call of Duty. Yeah, let's, like just, let's just jump to that. Here's a Bloomberg article that is going to be the last Bloomberg article I read for the next month because I'm reading my I'm reaching my limit. Um, Same. Activision's next three Call of Duty games will be on PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, agreement struck before Microsoft's deal will be honored. Microsoft could eventually deprive its uh, rival of the top franchise. Uh, this is by Jason Schreier. Activision Blizzard Inc., which is being bought by Microsoft, will release at least th the next three games in its hit Call of Duty franchise on Sony Group Corp's PlayStation, as well as its new owner's Xbox. Before news of the $69 billion acquisition broke last week, Activision had already committed to make the next few Call of Duty games available on Sony's console. According to four people with knowledge of the deal, speaking anonymously because they were not authorized to speak to press and they will get shot if they're caught. Uh, that includes this year's Call of Duty. Uh, expected to be a new entry in the popular Modern Warfare subseries, I did not know that, being developed by Infinity War. And the following game, which is in development by, at Treyarch, both Activision-owned studios. The deal also includes a planned new uh, iteration of Call of Duty Warzone. Interesting. The lucrative free-to-play game that was released in 2020. Phil Spencer, who was recently appointed chief executive officer of Microsoft Gaming, said last week that he had spoken to Sony leadership about the franchise. Quote, I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation, he said on Twitter. Sony is an important part of our industry and we value our relationship, of course, until you get a whole bunch of money and you decide the other thing is true. Uh, but gamers have been wondering what those existing agreements were. Traditionally, Call of Duty games have been released on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation where they drive uh, substantial sales. Call of Duty games have recently uh, have received heavy promotion on the PlayStation Store and been tied to massive marketing deals in recent years. Every game in the annual franchise ranks uh, among the top-selling games on PS4 and PS5. Call of Duty games have been this, the best-selling titles in the U.S. each of the last three years, according to the NPD Group. Uh, for at least the next two years, Microsoft is committed to releasing Call of Duty on PlayStation, the people said. Uh, neither Sony nor Activision responded to requests for comment. Microsoft declined to comment. So who told you? Oh, the two people that uh, are going to get shot in the head if they get found out. 
Plans are hazier for the Call of Duty games further out, said the, the, the people familiar with the matter. Microsoft said it expects the acquisition to close sometime in the next six to six to 18 months, which is a pretty big window, after which it will be able to decide whether to continue releasing for future Call of Duty games on PlayStation. Top employees at Activision have also discussed spacing out Call of Duty releases rather, rather than putting them out every year, Bloomberg reported. I agree they should do that. Eventually, Microsoft could deprive its biggest rival of an integral franchise with some previous acquisitions. Microsoft has honored existing contracts and then pivoted. Do you? How much Call of Duty do you play, Kevin? Like none. <laughs> I messed with some of them back in the day, and I have paid attention to things that happen with them as far as news goes, but it has never been a thing that I particularly care about. So I used to play Call of Duty a lot, um, and then I fell off, um, hmm, was it uh, Advanced Warfare, or was it Black Ops 3? Yeah, that- Advanced Warfare was when I think things started getting rough. Like it was mm-hmm. like, okay, like what's what's happening with these? Because that was when I think the three studio approach started, was uh, around mm-hmm. that time. Because that was the one with uh, Kevin Spacey, right? Yes, <laughs> I did not play that one. <laughs> um, I fell yeah, was- off, I think, with Black Ops Three because I was playing the single player. That's the one that was in the future, I think. Um, yeah, I like was near pl- future at least. And it jumped around a lot, and I was playing the single player, and I got a network communication error during the single player, and I just rage quit and never played it again. I completely gave up. But I used to play a lot of Call of Duty multiplayer, and I didn't pick it up again until uh, Black Ops 4 was only online, and I played, that had a battle royale, and I liked that a little bit. Uh, But then Warzone came out, and I became addicted to Warzone. So now I'm back into Call of Duty. I don't play the, the the like main games. I basically just play Warzone. Um yeah. So I'm shocked to hear that they're going to make a new Warzone this year. <laughs> I was not expecting yeah, something next, like that. I think that one was slated for 23. Uh The deal also includes right. a planned new iteration of Call of Duty Warzone. Oh, that uh, yeah, this doesn't say. So that could be next year. Okay. That would that would gotcha. make a little a little bit of sense. Yeah, cuz in general it's just talking about for the next 2 years. Yeah, it's a weird uh cuz obviously part of this is pre-existing agreements, right? It's why Xbox bought Bethesda, but we still got Deathloop as a PlayStation exclusive and we're going to get or at least timed exclusive, who knows, what we'll see in a couple of years. Uh and then what's the other one coming out? Ghostwire? That's also a PlayStation exclusive for now, but it's Bethesda. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh Here's an interesting... I just saw this tweet from Phil Spencer. Uh, Had good calls this week with leaders at Sony. I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony is an important part of our industry and we value our relationship. Interesting way to put that. Because I guess now they have a relationship. Like a year ago, that wasn't really a relationship. Yeah. Well, and... It's such a specific, I mean, any tweet from a major CEO is going to be specifically worded for reasons, right? Because the two mm-hmm. main things there are uh, honor agreements that are pre-existing, thus the talk of at least the next three games, right? Like the the Schreier article was saying. Uh, but then also, uh, what was it? Our desire to keep games on PlayStation, which doesn't mean that they actually plan to do that. It just means they would be interested in it. Whether or not that includes any kind of additional strings, for instance... Hey, yeah, it can stay on PlayStation if Game Pass is also a part of the PlayStation ecosystem. That's or true, if yeah. Insert other, yeah, there's a lot of very specific wording here that uh, kind of leaves some some gates open, depending on how pessimistic you want to be. Uh, it's, yeah, and it's, look. Th- th- there is a history of, of Microsoft trying to do something with PlayStation and being like, we want to do this, but then X, Y, and Z and, and, and PlayStation be like, no, we want this, this, and this, or else we're not going to do it. Like with the uh, cross-platform multiplayer, like PlayStation had like really strict outlines that they wanted for, 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 uh, for that. Um, yeah. So yeah, this was worded very specifically. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, and the thing is too, right? Like this is such a huge acquisition. I mean, Bethesda was already a big deal last year, less than a year ago, really. Uh, and here's a company they paid 10 times, almost 10 times as much to grab. 
Um, and what really makes it weird too, right, is with Bethesda, there was the whole sort of, they were initially a little coy about it, and then it kind of came out, okay, yeah, Starfield, Elder Scrolls 6, these are probably going to be Xbox, PC, you know, things that can support Game Pass kind of platforms. Right. Um, but those are also primarily, at least, single-player games, right? Bethesda generally doesn't have a lot of multiplayer stuff other than their MMOs and, like, Fallout 76. Otherwise, single-player stuff. A little easier, I think, to kind of force that transition. Call of Duty, you have multiplayer communities. You know, there's a right. lot more of a kind of an active base here. So how that gets changed over time and that could even be something they mess with over the next few years right uh give more reasons to get the xbox version than the playstation one earlier content exclusive content uh you know all kinds of stuff that is no stranger to call of duty's history anyways right that happened all the time with 360 getting early stuff and then ps4 getting early stuff because it was which console is more popular in the u.s at the moment <laughs> that's that's true uh i i i always thought like microsoft knows that uh it benefits them as a publisher to allow their game to be on whatever the platform people want to play it on. So that's why they, they keep a lot of Bethesda games. I think that they're moving forward. A lot of Bethesda games are going to be on PlayStation. I mean, Starfield's not, but uh, may, I, I, I would be surprised if Elder Scrolls or, or uh, Fallout is not on, on uh, PlayStation consoles. But uh, so I, I think that as a publisher, they know the value in putting their games wherever people want to play them. And, I mean, we kind of see that across Xbox and PlayStation, uh, Xbox and PC. They just, like, hey, as long as you're, as long as you're playing the game, we don't really care. But yeah. reading that article, I was like, they really would, like, murder Sony. They would have, they would take out a big chunk of Sony if they don't put Call of Duty on PlayStation. That would hurt them, like, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, right? You're like talking about in terms of they're the publisher, so it benefits them to have it on as many places as possible. The thing you got to think about with Xbox right now, and I'm not saying that this is for sure what, what they're going to do or why. This is just my reading of the situation. Um, the thing about Xbox, right, is right now you can't look at them as being the company that makes the Xbox Series X. Right. They're the company that makes Game Pass. Like, the hardware is now a secondary consideration to the service. Uh, Game Pass is where it's all at in terms of you can use it on PC, you can use it on Xbox. This is where those games are going to be made available in a way for you to be able to access them, along with traditional methods of, you know, if you still want to buy a physical copy or digital, I'm sure physical is going to phase out eventually. It'll be a sad day. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I, I think it's not looking at least to replace that entirely. So when you look at the whole thing with PlayStation, uh, it's sort of like, well, are you going to join the family of having our service here somewhere? You know, like that's the thing, right? The, the 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 making the money isn't necessarily just selling the game; it's getting people in their ecosystem. Yeah, I, I think. The, I I think when people have the decision between a Microsoft console or a PlayStation console, and 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 they and they maybe they play Call of Duty, they might be like, "Oh, I can buy it on place. I can buy a PlayStation. And I can buy Call of Duty, or I can buy an Xbox, and for one dollar, I could play the new Call of Duty." and any other triple a game they release i know sony's kind of working on their own service like that but i can't imagine it being anywhere near as uh good as what we already have with microsoft yeah that's a uh, project spartacus i think it's being called we that's all rumors still right now but the idea is that they're going to upgrade and collapse playstation now and playstation gold into one service mm -hmm. um that's all rumor. I think it was Schreier who actually talked about that too initially, and that was back in was that late last year or early this year? I don't remember right now. It was a. It was uh, pretty recently, I think. It was pretty recent. It was either December or this month. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that forms. Because what's really interesting too about all this is how people talk about Game Pass versus uh, PlayStation Now. And while there are certain things that Game Pass does do better, PlayStation Now really isn't as far behind as I think some of the perception is. Uh, Sony just doesn't market it or push it like Xbox does. I, I, I think that's why them collapsing the two services together is such a big deal because the I think the biggest problem PlayStation has is the is that it's confusing. PlayStation Now came out and everybody fucking hated it and it was just a bad service and then it got a lot better, um, but people still associated it with a bad service. Um, yep. And 
it's a weird like sort of middle ground like it used to be all streaming but now it's like maybe not so much and people still associate it with like a shitty streaming service so yep. uh being able to make it just like game pass is probably gonna help a lot um and i think it's interesting yeah. it's 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 supposedly called project spartacus because that's directly like aimed at microsoft <laughs> That's a direct Halo reference. Like we want it. We we I don't know. Um but anyway, uh I I I think it's yeah, this this whole si- this this whole situation is 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 uh going to be very interesting to see play out. Uh I I I, I like a week ago I would have been like PlayStation's killing it right now. PlayStation's got a uh, got the balls in their court. Everybody wants a PlayStation 5. But now I'm like, I mean, Microsoft's making some plays. Yeah. I mean, the the thing that I've been kind of telling people when I think about that situation, right, is that like right now, as things are at this moment with what's out and what's available, if you ask me, you know, which system do you want to get? uh, And I think we talked about this before the last time I was here. uh, I'm going to tell you a PlayStation 5, just because in terms of what is available as far as exclusivity goes, there's a lot of great content there. Uh, and there's a few other ways to access that Xbox content if you have like a decent PC or whatever. Uh, whereas, you know, with all the moves being made right now, I don't know how long that stance is going to be maintained because the more stuff that gets released and the more kind of ridiculous acquisitions like this right. can occur. I mean, is this even it, right? Like, I remember when Bethesda happened, there were all the jokes that started with, oh, well, who are they going to buy next? And they should buy this company, and they should buy this company. And a lot of times, if you brought up an idea, someone would be like, no, that's, I mean, that's a lot of money, or that's ridiculous. And here they are spending, what was it, $70 billion, basically, yep. just under, <laughs> for one of the biggest third-party companies out there. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine that. I, I'm shocked that uh, Microsoft was willing to let like their games division spend that much of their money (laughs) like i know that they make a lot of money but like 70 billion is is astronomical a few years ago when i was looking it up uh i think it was like 2017 the games industry made a hundred billion that year the whole year the entire global games industry made a hundred billion dollars so this acquisition was 70 percent of that (laughs) and it's one company buying one other company so uh i mean they're gonna make their money back and i'm sure microsoft has a lot of other reasons why they want to use uh uh activision but oh another thing i wanted to bring up was uh uh right now there is currently no way to stream call of duty and unless you use one of those like things where you can like uh, remote into a pc like i know parsec has ways you can like rent a pc to remote into and play games um but i pretty i'm pretty sure that activision was uh copyright striking people who did that um so there there wasn't like a way to do it through game pass or or the only way to do it was to remote into your playstation or your or your xbox and play call of duty that way there was no service where you could play call of duty like you could with like uh like on like on Google Stadia or Nvidia, you could like play uh, Cyberpunk or 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 I think Battlefield or whatever. Um, so I'm thinking maybe Activision was like trying to do like a streaming service of their own, and they just couldn't figure it out. And they know Microsoft's got what it takes to do something like that. I'm very excited to be able to uh, to to just straight up go right to the cloud for for Warzone if I really need to. Uh, hopefully that'll be the case but uh yeah i thought that was interesting that it's 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 not available on streaming anywhere but now it probably will be interesting are you were there also blocks in being able to do things like remote play or was it just as long as it can't be no you service like could you, you could play? you could remote play but that's it you couldn't okay. uh like yeah. cloud stream there's no cloud streaming for warzone is what i what, what i should have said um right and it's no, what I, I wanted i, I follow up it's like one of the only PC games that I that that's like that. Usually, like Stadia and like 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 Destiny. Destiny is everywhere. You can cloud stream that wherever you want. Um, yeah. But uh, but I couldn't figure out how to do it with Warzone, or or any Call of Duty at all. 
Also, anyway. Kodak's going to be out. Throw that out there. That's also, you know, that that's that's one oh, shining yes. thing about all this. <laughs> yes. So, Bobby Kodak. Uh, uh, I'm sure I, that was already covered last week. I just got to throw that out there one more time. Well, there's <laughs> more there's more reasons to love the guy. You know, first of all, this face. I've been staring at this face like the whole time we've been talking, and I just want to get it off my screen. Um, Game Rant says, uh, report says, Bobby Kotick was late to meetings with employees about Microsoft acquisition and left early. That's not what we, hold on. That's not the title I saw. Uh, Bobby <laughs> Kotick doesn't reassure Activision employees. That's what I saw. Uh, title update. Uh, it's been an event. It's been an eventful chaotic time for Activision Blizzard, mired in sexual harassment lawsuits, workplace controversies, delaying several high profile projects, including an annual Blizz, BlizzCon convention. And the stock price plummeting. The future of the industry giant had never felt so uncertain as it did in 2021. Something needed to change. That change came in the form of Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, which we all know because we've talked about it extensively. Uh, with Microsoft publicly criticizing the way the leadership of Activision Blizzard has handled the situation in the last couple of months, as well as denouncing the actions that got them in their current predicament, it is plain that the new ownership has ambitious designs in mind to course correct. And in order to do that, they must first address its CEO, Bobby Kotick. Uh, this beautiful man right here. To put it simply, the future of Bobby Kotick as the head Activision Blizzard is likely coming to an end following a trans transitory uh, period. I learned new words in this on this Sound podcast. It out. Following a transitory period after Microsoft formally acquires the company, Bobby Kotick is expected to stand down as CEO and take on a smaller role before receiving. A uh, three hundred and seventy-five million windfall, million dollar windfall, windfall. I thought it was like a parachute. I, th I think he gets like money for for leaving if he leaves yeah, a certain I think way. They're, I think they're using windfall in the sense of like they're using it like oh, just a whole bunch of money's pouring in. But yeah, right. I, parachute is what a lot of people are using because it means he's getting a safe landing. He's not getting kicked out. You know, right? It's not leaving in in in. Well, there's probably a good degree of disrespect, but it's <laughs> he's getting his paycheck. Yeah, we talked uh, about it last week on the podcast. All the different ways that he can cash out and how he can get kicked out without cashing out. And I think the worst that could happen is he gets two hundred mil, uh, two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Instead of, yeah. I mean, that's a lot less than three hundred seventy-five million, but you know, still, still a decent parachute. <laughs> might, he might just break his legs. That's about it. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyway, one anonymous employee told the Washington Post that though the the people working at Activision Blizzard were optimistic about the buyout by Microsoft, they remained wary of Codex behavior who arrived several minutes late to a fireside meeting uh, meant to reassure employees on the transition before prematurely concluding it after just 16 minutes. <clears throat> During the meeting, Bobby Kotick likened the company to be as important as his children, okay, dude, implying that if he were to relinquish his hold on Activision Blizzard, he would do so bitterly. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He reiterated he reiterated that he would remain the CEO of the company during the transitionary period for as and for as long as he was needed afterwards, claiming that Microsoft's plan was to retain as many of Activision Blizzard's people as possible, and that was his goal to make the transition and acquisition as smooth as possible. Bobby Kotick was reportedly against Microsoft acquiring Activision prior to the buyout. Also interesting. Yet until the torch is passed to Microsoft, the fear and anger tied up to Bobby Kotick will remain. The employee, uh, the employee explains to Washington Post. They further went on to say that with no mention of the strike, lawsuit, or any of the other issues plaguing Activision Blizzard, Kotick may as well have not held a meeting at all. <laughs> While signs point that his tenure at the company won't be long after the acquisition is complete, Removing Kodak would be the first and necessary step to rebuilding Blizzard's reputation and trust with its consumers, our customers, something which its current head, Mike Yubara, stated with uh, was an important goal in the coming years. <laughs> we got there. You did it. I'm proud of you. Um, so that's a bit of news uh, that uh, 
he he's he's trying to hold on as long as possible. I thought there was like a plan. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, it's one of those things where you're also hearing different stuff because I mean, he'll claim like, "Oh yeah, no, I'm all behind for this sale to happen and we're going to make a smooth transition." But there has been multiple reports of other people being like, "Oh no, he was totally against this. This is a thing that, you know, he did not want the buyout to happen, but here we are now and it's yeah. Yeah, it, it's it seems like a little bit of a, a conflicting reporting. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense that he would want. He's trying. I mean, him leaving this whole acquisition was probably the best thing that could happen to Activision because they were in the they were in the dumps anyway, and there was no salvaging it with him as the CEO. So, uh, him I- get this buyout. And 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 him being like forced to leave in that way is probably the best thing for Activision and also the best thing for this asshole because he's gonna make out with a shit ton of money anyway. Yeah, I'm sure it's that kind of sense of control though, right? Like going out on your terms, mm-hmm. not because you know. Because look, when you have that level of you know money just buying power right like i don't think it's even about that at that point anymore i mean don't get me wrong if you lost every cent there would certainly be a change of tune but in terms of just having that the priority then just becomes dominance right it becomes a personality yeah. thing an ego thing uh like he you know like you were saying with that that parachute right even if it was the 200k he's gonna be fine you know yeah. I, i'm sure that dude has all kinds of money stored away and some of them in very greatly legal ways in order to pay as little taxes as possible on it. Uh, yeah. He's going to be okay. You know, the, he doesn't care about securing his future and the future of his children. He cares about, you know, legacy and name power and just <laughs> staying in charge. And so, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I think that uh, it's, it's, it, him staying there is is a is I mean also the fucking lawsuit that the state of California did to meaning that there's some shady shit going on over there uh, that that he she should be forced out in some way so yeah uh, yeah this is I mean it sucks to say that one mega corporation buying another more mega corporation is a positive thing. <laughs> Yeah. Like, there's been a lot of that debate too right like yeah. in terms of yeah it's 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 one of those things where it's i don't know if i would call it silver lining but it's like yeah, yeah. it's not really there there's a potential future there and tr- if this becomes a habit but in this specific instance you're like all right but i mean this boss has got to be better right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like, this has got to be and i mean that was even the tone i think coming from a lot of uh you know, reports that were coming and people who were actively tweeting that learned about the news the same time we did, who are employees or in that situation, a lot of them were like, well, this doesn't change all the like totally messed up shit we're trying to fix right now. But I mean, this sounds, I mean, that sounds like a better, th- th- this is at least a, a, a crack of light showing up to be like, okay, maybe we're, we're going to start climbing out of this a little better now. Right. It's, it's bizarre. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, like people have said, most of the times when, uh, uh, a, a big company acquires another company there's a lot of layoffs and the transitionary period is, is a horrible period um yeah i don't know for a fact but i'm pretty sure that whenever microsoft purchases another company they're pretty good with that they're not gonna like just kick everybody out um and it, it bobby Kotick said in this in this meeting uh they're trying to hold on to uh to everybody or I don't know exactly what he said, but it sounded like they're trying to hold on to as many people as possible. Um, and uh, but I mean, I, I would imagine Microsoft wants to hold on to as many people as possible. Activision is notorious for just firing thousands of people a year. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, who knows? Who knows if Bobby Kodak doesn't just you know fire a bunch of people? in like a scorched earth way before he like, you know, just takes off. Just Nero fall of Rome, burn it all around him. Right. Yeah. Him <laughs> he, yeah. he, he might be yeah. trying to, to just hold on for himself by saying that, by saying that they're not trying to kick anybody out. He's trying to, he's like me too. Right. I'm one of those guys. You don't want to kick out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, there's going to be so much of how this develops over not even just this next year as the acquisition goes through. I, 
all of the potential implications of a, of a merger this large, we're just not going to realize for another. We'll probably start to see it in like five years. But I mean, the this is one of those things where, you know, 10, 20 years from now, we'll look back on when the merger started and be like, yeah, man, that's when all this stuff started going down. Yeah, <laughs> like that, yeah. that's how it ended. You know, we really, I don't think we can really fully grasp all the implications of this anytime soon. Right. And hopefully there's, it's for the better in general, you know? There's one more article I want to read on the subject, and that's uh, Activision Blizzard reportedly considered buying Kotaku and PC Gamer in order to make themselves look good. <laughs> Uh, Activision Blizzard is reportedly doing what I just said. A new report published by the Wall Street Journal uh, delving into the circumstances surrounding Microsoft's recent acquisition of the publisher alleges that micro that Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick may have discussed attempting to purchase a video game publication prior to the deal in order to change his company's public image. Mr. Kotick has been eager to change the public narrative about the company and in recent weeks has suggested Activision Blizzard make some kind of acquisition, including of gaming trade publications like Kotaku and PC Gamer, according to people familiar with him. The report stated, while the article makes the claim that this could have been the case, it also states that an Activision spokeswoman disputed the claims. And that, of course she did. And that both Geo Media, Kotaku's parent company, and PC Gamer didn't respond when we reached out to comment. Even if Activision Blizzard had been able to purchase either site, the conflicts of interest, the ethical concerns, and internal politics such a move would likely cause could have proven highly damaging, even without specific demands that a journalistic outlet uh, write positive coverage about a scandal hit. I, I can't read this. It would be a fucking shit show. Microsoft announced its intent to acquire Activision Blizzard earlier this week. The deal weighed in at $68.7 billion. It gets lower and lower every time I read it. Uh, that means that Xbox will soon own a number of additional IPs, including all like Call of Duty and Overwatch and all that stuff. Uh, we read all this already. Right? Yeah, just to go back on that real quick, uh, can you just imagine a potential future where, like, three years from now, we get a new Crash Bandicoot game and it's <laughs> Xbox PC exclusive? Like, do you know how yeah. mind bending that is? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah. But then, but but here's the thing: we we had Crash Bandicoot games that were, I mean, they weren't Microsoft exclusive, but it was Xbox 360 and PlayStation 2. So it was like it was like kind of an Xbox exclusive already. It's just that nobody fucking played them. So people acted like it's like didn't happen. Yep. Uh, also mind breaking. Could you imagine the whiplash you would experience reading any Kotaku article that came out the day before they got bowed out by Activision if that happened, and then an article you'd read that following day? Like the tonal. Like I feel like if you're going to talk about media to buy out, regardless of your opinion of each individual uh, publication. I feel like there's subtler ones you could buy out. Like <laughs> the, the change of tone that would happen with Kotaku would be just meme worthy when it happens, yeah. right? I mean, there's already those times where whenever a major corporation buys out a, uh, a newspaper or a publication, you'll see the before and after articles where it's like, oh, here's why, you know, NFTs are bad. Actually, NFTs are great. You know, like that kind of thing. There's one with Jeff Bezos. <laughs> I think he bought the Washington Post or something. And it's like, here's why the, the tax credits that billionaires get is good. <laughs> yep, that's the exact one. Like, yeah. Can you imagine how obvious painfully that would be for Kotaku specifically. I feel like IGN, Game Inform, like so many other companies would at least be like, all right, maybe this transition can be smooth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean I mean, honestly, it was like if if you're an evil CEO, that's the move is controlling the media around your company. You know, oh right. I got all these the media is the ones taking me down. So let's try to control as much of it as possible. We got the money. Yeah. So, right. literally like a Lex Luthor guy we got going on here. So, like, if, in case you had any doubt that this guy was an evil man, uh, here's the proof. Also, state of California uh, trying to fucking, you know, take him out is probably should be proof enough. Go team. <laughs> Go team. <laughs> anyway, let me read a couple notifications, then we'll move on to some other stuff. Um, 
Left off with Careless PNC. Thank you for the Prime Summer Gamer. Thank you for the host. We got EIP. Thank you for the 11 months. Hey, Bob. Apparently, Sony made the PS app work like Xboxes where captures get sent to your phone for easy sharing. Share a tweet about it in the supporter. Okay. Uh, have you seen this? I have not seen this. That sounds interesting, though, because that's a feature I really... I, I don't use it as often as I should uh, doing what we do for jobs, but I, it's a feature I really like on Xbox that I wish Sony would have. So if that's been added, freaking oh, great. looks like Greg Miller tweeted about it. Uh, oh, there you go. It's uh, it's just a section in the app that says captures. Your captures Sweet. on PS app. Captures you take on the PS5 will appear here. Thank God. Some awesome. UI changes. Yo, you know what pissed me oh, off yeah, today? Let's go. I turn on my PlayStation 5. Right, this is the this is the PlayStation 5 grievance hour. I turn on my PlayStation 5 today and I plugged in a LAN cable and it didn't automatically switch to the LAN cable. I had to go into the settings and select that I wanted to switch from Wi-Fi to LAN. And I did I had no I I was in a new location. I didn't have the Wi-Fi set. I had just the LAN cable plugged in. Yeah, I don't that's been a headache for me. Uh same goes for because uh, I'll bring my PS5 between my office and my apartment. It doesn't mm -hmm. auto detect. It knows what networks it's used before, and it remembers the passwords and everything for them. But you have to manually be like, "Oh yeah, connect to this network now that we're over here now." Oh it does not God. auto detect. Like, yeah. That's so annoying. Or I gotta, for me, it has not. You know, let's ask. I mean, let's ask given Kevin. How many people are in that situation. But, uh -oh. Let's ask Kevin here a question. Uh -oh. Have you ever seen? the screen on the PlayStation 5 that says, uh, you didn't turn me off right. Make sure you turn me off right next time you unplug. I saw that all the time on the PS4. I have not seen it as often on the PS5 because I'm careful and there's not other- How are you careful? What are you doing? I shut it off. Ah, so do I. So do I. I do the same like thing. <laughs> What do you do? I what literally, do do? today, today I reaffirmed it. I, I hit the PlayStation button. I go down. I go over to the power. I hit power. And then I go turn off PlayStation. And it even says, do this if you want to unplug it from the wall. And I also yeah. never unplug the fucking thing from the wall. It's just every time I turn it on, it says you didn't unplug me, right? So you're not even moving it. It's just giving you that error. Yes. And actually today, I moved it, and it didn't give me the error. <laughs> it, is it, like, hooked up to a power strip that can be turned off by a switch or something? That sounds... Okay, I have not had that issue on the PS5. It is plugged into the same power switch that my Xbox is plugged into, and my Xbox has never given me an issue. Oh, well, my Xbox never reports that issue. Like, PlayStation's always been very particular about make sure it's shut down properly if you're going to shut it down and unplug right. power. Because I'd get that error all the time when... I would move systems around, like, you know, whatever, we're making a set or something, uh, and someone else around me would go grab it and just unplug it and be like, son of a it's going to yell at me when I turn it off, okay? <laughs> so, like, I was used to seeing it all the time back then, um, but with the PS5, I, you know, come to think of it, I think I have heard of some people having that error, but I'm so, not sure what... So EIP, unit or what. EIP who's the guy who mentioned the app... He in the chat says, uh, most common issue is when it does the firmware update. Uh, the restart process will sometimes not do the restart and therefore give that error that you unplugged it wrong or something. So that could be it. It could be sitting there and it receives an over-the-air update and uh, restarts weird or something. That would make a certain sense, yeah. Because I have not personally encountered that a lot, except when I know it wasn't unplugged properly. Like, I, I can source, I know where things went wrong <laughs> right. for me. I never, so. ever, ever put it to sleep. I always straight up turn it off. The Xbox, on the other hand, that when you hit off, it goes into the the always on like sleep mode. But that doesn't give a shit when you, un I can unplug it, do whatever I want with it. It doesn't care. Yep. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> Pokeshocks, thank you for the whole year. Uh, hi there. Oh, hi, here just to drop by and say happy one year. Thank you, Pokeshocks, for the one year of support. I very much appreciate it. Uh, anyway, uh, just, a li just a light smattering of Nintendo news uh, right here. Gotta stay there, on brand. Can't... Gotta stay on brand. There was a, there was a, people were upset when the N64 games dropped because Ocarina of Time looked weird. Uh, now, 
they might have shadow fixed it a little bit. Uh, a little bit. This is by NME.com. A new Legend of Zelda update suggests that Nintendo is adjust is making adjustments to the N64 game emulation. As reported by VGC, following a new Switch Online update alongside the release of Banjo-Kazooie, players have discovered that the infamous Water Temple glitch in Ocarina of Time has now been fixed. The glitch is really just that there's no fog, right? The discovery came from Oatmeal Dome, who's a, like a prominent data miner, uh, he realized that the room's transparency graphical glitch related to the water texture had been fixed since the latest update, but it looks like the fog is still missing. So I'm just going to read their tweet. Uh, Oatmeal Dome said, it seems the water in the now infamous water temple room has been fixed in the latest update. I think the fog is still missing though. Haven't checked the rest of the game to see if any of the issues have changed, but this is promising. He also went on to say, full disclosure, I loaded this room with the Ocarina of Time speedrun practice ROM to skip through the entire water temple. First, I loaded room 013 and removed and uh, moved myself into the area. Then I went into the door and went back to clearly reload the area. Uh, seems it's still not 100% better. Here's a screenshot of the GameCube version uh, where it has fog. Um... Anyway, uh, Interesting. it looks like the See update to- didn't fix every N64 game glitch as graphical issues are still present in Paper Mario and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I didn't play Ocarina of Time on uh, on the N64 uh, app. I played it on uh, in an emulator like recently, so I, yeah. I was like, I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm not playing it again. <laughs> yeah, uh, Actually, MVG, I think yesterday or the day before, posted a, a pretty good video going over a lot of the changes and adjustments. He does a lot of comparisons. He doesn't. I don't think he goes as in depth on his methodology like that guy was in the tweets. But mm-hmm. as far as just showing footage from like here we are in the water temple, here we are doing this stuff. Here's the differences. Um, yeah, the water temple thing. There's still no fog, but it looks better in general. It's least. the textures on the uh, water, right? That look better. The, the textures and the reflection on in the water. Uh, and on top of that, something, I don't know if that article mentioned it and we just didn't read it. Uh, the input lag is reduced as well. Uh, oh, that's, a frame or two. that's the biggest deal probably. Cause that's, I, yeah. Pete, that was the biggest complaint when the, when the N64 games came out was specifically Ocarina of Time had a lot of input lag. It, it wasn't really and noticeable I, I, in, in any of the other, uh, there was input lag in some of the other games, but it was most n- noticeable in Ocarina of Time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so I, I think MVG was saying that his findings, it was one to two frames faster. I don't know if that's an exact number mm-hmm. or just him being like, yeah, it feels a little. But uh, yeah, that, that appears to have been updated as well. And I think the, the best part about this news, right, is the fact that Nintendo is at least paying attention. You right. know, like it'd be one thing like 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 if it just stayed the way it was forever, I think that would leave a much more sour taste in everyone's mouths. It, it's good to see that games that are having problems uh seem to be getting adjustments. I don't know if this, you know, what other ones are going to get fixing, because wasn't there something like Paper Mario was causing, like, save data to wipe for N64 games? Like, the game could crash I, a certain way and would just take the whole thing down? I don't know about that. I know that certain UI elements looked, like, really weird or something. Um, look, N64 emulation is hard, and it, it, it's it it's been rough on a lot of platforms that I've seen. Uh, uh, a lot of different people in the emulation community have gotten cert- a lot of things right, and through collaboration, they've kind of been able to make a lot of good N64 emulators and make a lot of good he- headway in that in that space. Um, Nintendo, like, has to take a stance against using any of their work and has to try to do it on their own. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's never going to be as good as, as the conglomerate of all of the emulator community from the past. 30 years <laughs> there's no way that not they could mention, compete with that yeah not to mention the passion that goes into that for fans right like, it's just right. different when it's a work thing um yeah, but that's exactly. actually also what's kind of frustrating about this situation is that uh especially for like the ocarina of time example uh there are past examples of nintendo emulation that did work better right uh, like the I, I don't know all the full comparisons but it's like for instance the input lag that's in that and that was also present in super mario 64 uh is greater than what was on the wii u <laughs> like we we know like we have past examples yeah. of you doing better. So why on the newer thing? What yeah, happened? Yeah, <laughs> uh, on 
Ocarina of Time even on uh, on the virtual console and even in the GameCube that they, they they had it figured out and uh, now it's it's all it's all weird, but I mean that's uh, I'm I don't know I I mean I know that when I play uh, ROMs on all different types of devices things break in like a weird oh. way specifically for n64 and also a little bit playstation but specifically n64 there's some weird errors errors that happen i mean the gamecube port probably should have also been broken but that seems pretty clean to me so i don't know why that was clean maybe it's because it was so close to the release of the original and they maybe had the original to work off of i don't know um but I kind of understand why there's a lot of weird errors for N64 because it's yep. it's it's just difficult to work with now. But again, they've done it before. What did they do wrong yeah. now? This is also why uh, people in the community will tend to laugh or get frustrated when people talk about PS3 emulation on PlayStation 5 because not an easy system to get running. No. <laughs> there's uh, they, so many reasons why. Yeah, yeah, they purposely developed that system to be a pain in the ass to... to to mimic because because yep. of copyright issues because they i mean they had a huge problem with playstation 2s uh uh because people were were hacking them and stuff but not because it was easy to hack because it was just the most popular system ever so people yeah. tried really hard to hack it um yeah so anyway more zelda news though we're getting majora's mask who knows when sometime in february uh it runs great yeah, it's probably going to be weird. What I think what's really interesting about these releases is they have some super high res uh box art. Like this is the highest res like box art I've seen out of any of these uh Nintendo games. I or didn't N64 think about games. That. You're right. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they have like a source file somewhere they can use or something or Yeah, somewhere laying around. Um they're they're, they're super clean. Uh, the Mario Kart yeah, one little, looks awesome. Yeah, a little overly saturated. Although I don't know if that's your capture or anything messing with it. But uh, no, it, yeah. it it looks a little like the background looks a little washed out. But I think that's just the style. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, you might be getting a weird capture. I know I look saturated on your end, but whatever. You go to their Twitter. You can see it for yourself. Um, I Good it looks. Stuff. It looks like what they do is they uh, they release the N64 game, like they release Banjo-Kazooie, and then they immediately say, the next one's coming out next month, and they announce what the next one's going to be. But we knew Majora's Mask was going to come because they listed out like a bunch that they're going to release over time. We just didn't know in what order or which ones were going to be when. So the news yeah, here is, is actually- that February. Does does this exhaust that list? Is there more stuff? I don't remember what that full list was originally. No, there's more. There's Pokemon Stadium. There's a lot. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's going at a, a a decent pace. I think better than a lot of people were being pessimistic about because, especially in like the later years of NES and SNES, those releases really started to space out. I was pessimistic, for sure, because because yeah, yeah they, they they were spaced out a lot. Um, available in the future, Banjo Kazooie, which we just got. Uh, Majora's Mask, which we know is coming. F Zero, we don't have yet, right? Uh, we don't. Yeah. So F Zero is an interesting one because that's like one of the only sixty frames per second uh games on the N sixty four, and it's because of that it's rough to emulate. So that one's going to be interesting to see. Um, Kirby sixty four, that one we don't have. Mario Golf, I don't think we have. Uh, Paper Mario, we got. And Pokemon Snap, which we don't have. I thought Stadium. I I guess I'm wrong. I guess I guess I confused Stadium with Snap. Um, So out of those, we are still getting one, two, three, four. So we're getting four more. Interesting. And it's been roughly every month, right? Hopefully more, but it's. I they took a little bit of a break. They they took a they took a few months and then I think it's been every month. No, they took like well it came out in September right late September. Yes, I don't remember. And then I think they took Make October video. off and then they did November December January. And then February with uh, Majora's Mask. So true. Yeah. Very true. 
Uh, okay. Next news. Here you go. Last week, we talked about this water field design. Why is this not a link? I ruined this. Last week, we talked about this water field design case for the analog pocket. Well, uh, they're making a new case, apparently. Uh, another one. Waterfield Design makes, like, super high-end, like, leather, like, cases. They have one for the Switch that I use. Um, yeah. It's Which stupid expensive. Yeah, yeah I, d I don't recommend it. I only use it because they, I was privileged enough that they sent me one. Uh, but I kind of want the analog pocket one. It's pretty. It's only 50 bucks, and it's uh, only 50 bucks. But it's 50 bucks, and it's it's, like... Like I like I like this analog pocket case, but I don't really need it to be a hard shell. I I like having a pouch that I could put like you know games in and stuff. Um, but this one is bigger and more expensive, but you can carry a lot more stuff. Um, oh, remember the adapters too. That's nice. yeah. Remember when we reported the uh, Waterfield Design was creating an analog pocket pouch? Well, the bag maker is back a week later with the analog pocket pack, a folio case that organi organizes and protects the analog pocket console, dock, power brick, cords, cartridge adapters, and extra games. Costing a meaty $129, ouch. The analog pocket pack boasts the following features. I'm not reading all that. Just yeah. know that it's just a little <laughs> fanny pack looking thing. Yeah, I wonder what their actual, like, quantity produced and how quick they'll sell relatively right because you're mm -hmm. selling a product for an item that in and of itself is already extremely limited and has really only done its initial release and then everything after this is happening in waves that you know at least right now they're promising by like late 2023 i think mm -hmm. but who knows how far out these might actually end up go delivery window wise so this says if you buy it right now you're in the first batch and it'll ship in f february Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're being the second batch if you order now, and it'll ship at the end of February. And I completely forgot that I wanted the first one. And uh, I let's see what the let's see how screwed I am if I want this right now. Uh, a little like okay, March excessive. 11th. That's not too bad. I'm, I'm kind of tempted because, like, they're excessive for sure, but I mean, the analog pocket in and of itself is already yeah. excessive. So, <laughs> if I yeah. Uh, so I'd imagine that they had to have produced at least some of these already, like to 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 be able to sell them so quickly. Um, yeah. So hopefully they didn't make too many. Like hopefully they 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 anticipated that the analog pocket was going to be hard to get. And not a lot of people are going to have them. Um, inside we see some pockets where you put the console. You could put the dock in here. That's pretty sick. Uh, cartridges and stuff. I mean, you seem to lug things back and forth between your studio and your apartment, so this I is do. a great idea. And I have a bed. And the moment I leave it anywhere, Percy will turn it into a bed, and I got cat hair in my PS5. <laughs> that was this week. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in, like, a nice boutique way to carry around your analog pocket, this is pretty cool. Uh... I have to leave a tab open for that older one because I want to make sure that I purchased it. I don't know if I did. I don't. I don't like the big cases. I like the. I like having, like, like when am I gonna bring the dock around with me? You know. Yeah, that's like a very specific. You're traveling, and then you might as well just put that in a suitcase or something. Yeah, I I do want like a nice soft case because it is we. It feels weird having this rattling around in the case. It feels not <laughs> I, protected, even I though agree. it's probably the most protected. Yeah, no, I even said that in my video where like I, I I get the function of this, but I mean especially for a handheld, I it only protects the pocket and whatever game is in it. Like, what if I want to put, you know, what if I want to carry a game with me for a handheld system? <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have dedicated pockets, or if you have a Game Gear game in there, it's not going to fit in the case. So <laughs> yeah, then you're screwed, and then you just got to leave the the game loose. I have g loose Game Boy games all over the place. <laughs> got to keep testing stuff out, you know. Just pop yeah. it in, pop it out. Uh, all right, we're going to rapid fire some more news so we can uh, wrap this up a little bit. Uh, three new Star Wars games from Respawn. Look at that. Titanfall uh, 3 is never going to happen. No. <laughs> so this is EA I'm announced. Happy, 
announcing that Respawn Entertainment is, is making three more Star Wars games. The studio, also known for Titanfall and Apex Legends, is working on a follow-up to its hit 2019 action game, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, though it's not clear if the upcoming game is a direct sequel. A first-person shooter overseen by Star Wars Battlefront producer, oh, in the pipeline, and a strategy game. What? Produced by Respawn is on the way with Bit Reactor de- leading development. Who's Bit Reactor? And it, I do not know. Let's find out. The new third party studio is headed up by Greg Forcht, who uh, previously worked on the XCOM series. Yeah, I was about oh, to say that's, yeah, Bit Reactor used to work for X, used to do XCOM. Okay. Or at so, least it at a past job. Yeah, this is, a, it looks like a new studio. Uh, yeah. EA's exclusive license to develop and publish Star Wars games expires next year. An open oh, that's why they're firing these out. An open world Star Wars game from Ubisoft. Ew. The, Divi- the, the Division the Division studio, Massive Entertainment, is already in the works, while Quantic Dream is developing Star Wars Eclipse. Before those, the EA and EA before those and EA's trifecta of titles even get close to hitting your console or PC, you'll be able to dive into Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga, maybe. <laughs> also has its problems yes which we will talk about next um i've had enough with ubisoft i haven't liked anything they've done in a really long time they all feel like exactly the same game over and over again so i'm not too excited about uh them working on a star wars thing i'm very happy for ea to lose the license because i haven't liked much of what they've been doing with it Uh, although i haven't played fallen order i feel like i would like fallen order Fallen Order is actually very good. It, well, it's it's funny. I uh, if you look back at some of the news articles that were going around at the time, uh, the combination of the reaction to loot boxes in Battlefront Two uh, and the relative success of Fallen Order more or less convinced EA. Oh, maybe we shouldn't make everything multiplayer. Right. Like there was specific. I, I think there was even a specific argument of that was part of the reason why Dragon Age development restarted again because they were like, oh, I guess we shouldn't force this one to be a multiplayer game. Okay. I guess single player stuff can't sell. <laughs> right. Yeah. And 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 like all order was that good that it changed their mind. <laughs> imagine if it wasn't. Imagine if it sucked. Then then they would you know it would have been the end for 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 normal single player experiences like narrative games. The EA would have yeah, saw that and been like, game. "Ah, we can't do this anymore." Yep, and instead we're getting a Dead Space remake after they killed Dead Space. <laughs> I fired the whole the staff. Yeah, we're getting a lot of weird decisions from them too. Uh, I I had a there was a story about respawn a little while ago uh, that gave me a little hope for either a little more Titanfall or something with Apex to like cross over to Titanfall. I feel like that could be a really easy way to get people interested in a Titanfall situation is to just bring more Apex and like make a single player Apex and just call make it Titanfall but call it Apex. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but give me my mechs and my traversing, mm-hmm. and yes, I just want my robots back, man. I mean, yeah, I can still I play Titanfall two. But it's like keep it alive. It's a Titanfall two was a sad story because like EA kind of put it like put it out back and shot it in the head. That like like they've released it between two giant games, and uh, yeah. and yeah, it got buried. And it, yeah, and it was such a. I mean. Both critically and fan, like the reaction to that game was so positive, and no one. Yeah. It was just the turnover rate. Like, like everyone who played it was like, "Oh, this is like the best FPS in a decade." Like everyone should play this, and no one did. <laughs> yeah, it was no re- it was really Relatively, sad. Relatively, at least. Yeah. Um, but the people who worked on it seemed to <laughs> go on to do much better things. Like the guy who headed it, uh, moved on to do a bunch of stuff. Um. Anyway. Uh, speaking of new Star Wars games, Lego Star Wars, uh, probably not getting it when you think. Uh, riddled with delays. It's been delayed since fucking like 2019. Um, uh, oh, April 5th. Yeah, that's what the other article said. The long-awaited Lego Star Wars uh, saga will, will come out April 5th. Lucasfilm Games revealed Thursday. It also got an extended gameplay trailer showcasing levels from all three trilogies and the combat system. Uh Wait, this isn't the article. Isn't there an article that says that it was like uh, riddled with uh, delays or something? Uh, not necessarily riddled with delays, but riddled with lots of unhappy crunch and how employees were treated. Ah, that's the uh, next article right here. Um, yeah. Lego Star Wars Saga led to excessive crunch at TT Games. Uh, 
Wow, who would have thought? In late 2017, developer development studio TT Games began work on LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga at a time when dozens inside the company were at odds with management. Citing frustration over tight development schedules, the company's crunch culture and outdated development tools, more than 20 cur- con- uh, current and former TT Games employees tell Polygon that calls for change over the years had largely been ignored. Multiple people who worked at the studio remember breaking down outside of work hours because of the workload and some of the stresses they were under. It was a very soft-spoken blackmail. What? One former employee says, if people don't start doing overtime, there's going to be problems, although the problems were never specified. (laughs) That's like some mafia shit. Does, does, Does this article have the following people into the parking lot thing? Oh my god. Some former staff even came up with a term described their experience at the studio referring to them as PTTSD. Oh, that's cute. Uh, I don't see the following people into the parking lot. What is that about? So there was at least some reports that I I saw, and it might be good to find a proper source for this, Uh, but as part of the bad management, some of the culture, like you're seeing with the, you know, hey, like people need to work overtime or there will be consequences. On top of that, there'd be situations where people would try to leave at the end of their work day, you know, when they're supposed to, uh, and management would be like, follow them out and be like, why are you leaving? Why are you going home oh right God, now? God, that's, we that's have work to do. I guess like my worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Like you got, it's maybe you got awful. things to do at home, man. <laughs> yeah. Like work's over. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy that they're crunching like that and the game was delayed like years. <laughs> The game was supposed to come I mean, out so long be, ago. Yeah. I mean, some of that's got to be also COVID related. I mean, I'm sure if we weren't in the pandemic, that might have been delays. And then it came out in like late 2020 or something. Right. But imagine those problems they were already having. And then guess what? Work from home and all these other, the, the world being what it was <laughs> right. during that time frame. It still is really, uh, it did not help the situation. I mean, most game companies saw delays, but, uh, still like this is still excessive even for the covid delays you know yeah it's it's yeah. still which is it, also why yeah go on go i was ahead. just gonna say it's also why uh february and march is as stacked as it is because everything that was supposed oh, yeah. to come out like probably early 2020 is just now releasing in one chunk this year is crazy there's so much stuff happening um is there anything specifically you want to talk about next or I, I think we're good I, i'm just gonna delete all the other articles <laughs> It's <laughs> really nothing uh, important do, do, here. Do we want to take? Do we want to do a couple joke uh, castings for what the Rock might be doing? Sure. Let's see, let's take a look at the Rock here. Uh, the Rock is making another video game movie, but he won't say which franchise. He made a tweet, right? Okay, yeah, so it's he's super ominous. He said, "I can't tell you which game in particular we're doing, but there will be an announcement this year." The Rock said via Games Radar. We're going to bring one of the biggest, most badass games to the screen. One that I've played for years. I'm really excited to bring it to fans around the world. Of course, we're going to do right by our gamer friends. But really, we're just going to make a great movie. One that he's been playing for years. I'd like to think that they're just making another Doom movie and he forgot he was in the first one because everyone forgot that movie happened. (laughs) (laughs) So... I saw uh, a Zelda universe or something was saying uh, he's Ganon. Uh, <laughs> There's a few theories. Him him saying that uh, he's been playing it for years. Uh, it's got to be something super popular. I don't think he's really diving into like the indies or anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the one gut reaction I saw from someone that I kind of agreed with was God of War only because Sony in general has been pretty aggressive with wanting to make content based on their games. And we're getting that last of us. Is it a movie mm-hmm. or show for that? Actually? I don't remember. Uh, that Uncharted is, a show. is getting a movie. That's yeah. a show. Okay. And then uh, Uncharted is getting a movie and it's like, well, rock is a big muscular dude who can probably be angry and kill things. So I mean, that's, that seems like solid casting somewhat. Yeah. God of uh, war makes sense, but people in the chat are saying call of duty, which would be a horrible idea but makes a lot of sense <laughs> well, and then what how's that licensing working out in the middle of an acquisition like when was that deal struck and what's going on with that 
Oh yeah, that could it could get weird. totally totally killed. Yeah, um, I saw Gears of War as a theory too. Just I mean, everyone just went with what's the brawniest game character you could think yeah. of <laughs> and put the rock in that role. But it, but I mean, it could be something that's not you know brawny and they just make it brawny. Um, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there's less joke tweets about this. I think my favorite one was. Uh, Mike Bithell just at tweeted like, "We agreed, Rock. We're going to talk about this yet. I'm livid right now." Uh, Mike Bithell developed Thomas was alone. Swear. That's pretty good. That's about a page I'd watch. Yeah. Um, I, it could it could be another wacky Nintendo idea. It could be like a Donkey Kong or something. But uh, oh no, it can't be. They already have Donkey Kong. Roll. He's a, he'll be King K. Rule, or he'll be Diddy Kong. Who knows? You know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or 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 uh, uh, what's the one with the glasses? The cool one, the surfboard. Funky Funky Kong. Funky Kong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think this whatever it is, I have very little low expectations for <laughs> what it could possibly be. You didn't love Rampage. Uh, didn't love Rampage. Didn't love Doom. Uh, 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 the Rock does not have a good track record for video game movies so far. Yeah, he's fun to watch, but yeah, that's <laughs> uh, I'm not. I mean, look, video game movies in general are a rough proposition, right? Like, mm -hmm. right now we have, oh, Sonic wasn't as bad as we feared; it was actually pretty solid. Uh, and is that the end of the list? I don't even know. I'm trying to. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> is it. We're getting something obvious. <laughs> I feel like we're getting like something that was at least okay, but maybe that. Oh, as far as video game movies go, <laughs> that were at least fine. Oh, Detective good. Pikachu, Detective Pikachu. Oh, okay, that was yeah, pretty good. Yeah, Pikachu. That's what I'm forgetting. Yeah. The, so those two, which are relatively recent examples. Yeah. Uh, we'll Listen, Mario they've out. done great with video game movies as as, as uh, they've done much much better than they've done in the past. I just have little expectations for The Rock. So um, Monroy in the chat says it's Fortnite, and uh, that could also possibly be it because he's literally in Fortnite already. True. What would that even movie even look like? And that's like my first question with any time people are like, "Oh, they should make a movie out of this game." What does that even mean? What is yes. the plot structure? Like, well, what does that look like? What is a Mario movie? <laughs> they, they already have like a storyline in in Fortnite. It's wacky and weird, but they could do something yep. with that i mean maybe that's why he's in the game because it was a weird sort of like uh like deal they had like you're gonna be in the movie so let us steal your likeness for the game to promote it i don't know yeah i'd bite that could see it uh all right that's all the news we got uh let me read these real quick uh oh khalil jama with the 14 months just joined late and saw an ad it made me mad instantly well that's why you gotta subscribe and you can subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime already, you link it to your Twitch account. No more ads, buddy. But I appreciate it. Uh, what we do, we always talk, like to talk to the chat, read the comments from last week real quick. But before we do any of that, we, of course, have to. We just have to do. Twitter of the week! Twitter of the week! Twitter of the week! That's Twitter of the week. This is the Twitter of the week. It's just a sign. It says, you must wear a face. And then it's a guy ripping his own face off. And it says, I have rights. Love it. And then everybody laughs. It's a funny, funny joke. All right. Now we're going to talk to you people real quick, starting with uh, just a couple from last week's Wolf Den Live in the comments on YouTube. We have Steamed DeVito, who says, commenting for engagement. Thank you. That was very, very, a very... That was a very good comment to put here for us to react to. <laughs> but I mean, we do appreciate the engagement. Uh, Nick Province says, Microsoft just bought my house from right underneath me. <laughs> In a statement, they said, quote, we couldn't figure out how to build a, a good house ourselves, so we just bought all existing houses instead. Phil Spencer. Wow. I'm sorry I to mean, hear that. Works. But I hope you made out i hope you got a good parachute out of that deal uh dark type says the next biggest thing microsoft is going to acquire is yo mama <laughs> these people are good Classic. uh eps 5000 says it's funny how every single podcast some technical issue happens oh yeah it's funny to you guys <laughs> and me oh and him yes hey listen 
I don't want to jinx it. This has been going very smoothly. Last week uh, was a shit show. <laughs> uh, and last week was the day that the acquisition happened. We were like an hour late because all these... You know what it was? I was at the studio and my computer blue screened and reset itself and everything just fucking died and I couldn't do anything. Uh, and I had to come back to my apartment to do this. It was it was a mess. And then I got here and then everything broke here too. I like I was like contagious. Uh, Robert Taylor says Sony just pronouncing uh, Sony just producing more PS4s reminds me of Don Matrick telling the consumer or Don Matrick telling the consumers that if they didn't want an Xbox One to buy a 360. We've got a system for you. It's called the Xbox 360. Classic. <laughs> oh, Don. Uh, yeah. What do you think about them producing more PlayStation 5s or uh, PlayStation 4s instead of PlayStation 5s? I mean, look, sometimes the issue is a little more complex than I think some people are willing to interpret because sometimes it's very easy to be like, I just want the new thing that's out. I mean, part of this has to do with the price of buying an older system, especially in other territories where maybe the price of a PS5 is prohibitively just bonkers, right. <laughs> which can happen in some territories. Because uh, this is like a worldwide supply situation kind of thing, right? It's not just specifically, hey, you know what, U.S. market, just buy a PS4. You know, it's good. I mean, they're just trying to meet demand that's already existing and ongoing. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the 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 problems people mostly have is like, why can't you just ramp up PlayStation Five instead of PlayStation Four? And I'd imagine that they've thought about that, <laughs> and they've decided for yeah, whatever like reason that uh, it was probably easier for them to just ramp up ps4 yeah well it probably has to do with sourcing the silicon right like it's probably easier to get a hold of the chipsets that work for ps4 and make up the system and produce them uh it, it's right. just the availability is there right like the the chip shortage going on right now is impacting so many things and it's not like they can just be like well we'll take these old chips and just put like six of them in a PS5 and we'll be fine. Like that's not well. Well, they've already <laughs> they've already optimized how to produce PS4s. Uh, yep. I'd imagine they're working on a revision for the PlayStation Five that uh, and that fixes a lot of the issues that they have with production and other things wrong with it. So maybe next year or something, or late this year even. Maybe they'll have a solution for something like that that we can hear about. But uh, right now, it seems like the best option for them is to just ramp up PS4 production, I guess. Yep. And I don't think, uh, how big of a deal were, were Sony themselves actually making out of that? Like, I know I saw a lot of people report about it and talking about it, but it's not like Sony was, like, out front in everyone being like, hey, just go buy a PS4. Like, just don't, just do that. I don't think that was really, because that was what made the Don Matrick thing so hilarious, is that, like, your main figurehead for your company right now is telling audiences just don't buy our newest thing then go buy the old thing <laughs> yeah yeah no they, they were not it doesn't seem like they were making a big stink about it it seems like everybody else was making a big stink about it yeah i mean it's just i get it there's frustration it's people want the new stuff and it's very frustrating with how hard it is for all this stuff to release on top of you know how there is some stock available but it's just getting bought up by resellers trying to charge freaking tri three times the cost yes all right we're gonna read a couple chat messages real quick we got co trags who says bob have you played genshin impact anymore yes so i recently started genshin impact uh have you played any of that tiny bit mm -hmm. I, I actually have wanted to like put a little more into it but i, I just have not yet well it's on playstation 5 and it is ps5 optimize friggin uh 4k 60 all that i started it on pc and it looked friggin awesome on pc but uh, i did play a little bit more uh i uh i took an uber to long island on uh on sunday and i pulled my phone out I had the game downloaded. I pre I logged in. I pressed start, and my character was exactly where they were when I when I closed the game on PC, and I played, and it felt almost exactly the same. You know, you know, it was visually like a little different, but it felt exactly the same, other than I had touch controls. But it freaking blew my mind that I could just pick up like an online game like that, uh, like a grindy like like collecting like game where you'd always want to upgrade your stuff 
it, it basically you can't escape your addiction once you get addicted to it. Yeah, yeah. Now it's in your pants. You can pull it out whenever you yeah. want and just and just you know grind wherever you want. I did that for the clip. People are gonna clip that. It's gonna be funny. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, games. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, I haven't collected any more anime girls though. Uh, I'm gonna work on that. I think you're playing the game wrong. Yeah, I think that's. I, I mean, that's like half the point, right? Yeah. No, I definitely. And am. and. and 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 pretty anime boys. It's not. It doesn't have to be about gender here. There are pretty anime boys. I'm a big fan. Right now, I'm a big fan of Lisa, and I'm a big fan of Ka, the guy, the pirate guy. He's got an eye patch. He's, he's a hot man. Don't remember the names right now. But yeah, I'm gonna dive back into it at some point. I've only played it on my phone. I messed. Re- I mostly messed around with it when I was messing around with a lot of the like gamepad attachments, like the backbone and stuff. Right. So that's really when I actually like made a pretty heavy push. Mm-hmm. I'll go back at some point. But. I, I I think the biggest. I mean, I'm making a whole video on it, and it is and it's sponsored, so everybody just take it with a grain of salt. But this isn't sponsored, so I can say whatever the fuck I want right now. Uh, I think the the biggest draw, the biggest difference between this and Breath of the Wild, is that uh, the combat has like elemental damages and stuff. So there's seven different types of elemental damage, and you can switch between characters in the middle of combat on the fly. So you can chain together moves and the elemental damages like uh like stack and 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 like like you could freeze somebody and then smash them into bits with like a rock type move. Um so that feels really awesome and fluid when you when you start getting your characters, building them the way that you want to, and then chaining between them all, uh, depending on what the the the, the situation you're in is. So uh it, it's like a really cool spin on on a game we've already played, you know, for years. The, the problem I always run into with games like that is that I'll find a character that I'm like, oh, this person's awesome, great. Find out they're like the bottom tier. <laughs> like yeah, every that's time. what that's what happened to me because <laughs> I'm I just started the game, so of course they're all bottom tier. Um, yeah. yeah, and then that's another problem is like you put a lot of you put a lot of stuff into upgrading one of the characters, and then you realize that they that they suck. But I was playing it on Twitch and I had the chat yelling at me the whole time. They're like, no, don't put anything into this one. This person sucks. Save all your stuff for the next person. So that helps a lot. Uh, anyway, uh, Kjax says, have you seen the Odin has had a couple of minor QC issues with some of the first units? Do you know what the the Ein Odin is? Uh, yes, at least generally. I don't know the like specific hard specifics on it, but I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, it's the uh, Android uh, emulator console. Um, yeah, little handheld. I have not seen any of that. I haven't really been looking. Uh, mine has shipped, I believe. Um, I am reserving all my judgment until I get mine in my hands. I stopped paying attention because uh, it's been delayed a million times, and I, it's kind of a I'll believe it when I see it kind of thing. I have very I have no expectations for this thing because it's again it's a brand new company. This is the first thing they're making, uh, and I've had all sorts of problems with all these sorts of portable emulators. So I know kind of what to expect. Um, yeah, QC stuff is always rough too because if you happen to get the one that's good, you'd be like, "Oh, this thing's great." And everyone's like, "Shut up! It's terrible." Look yes. at this other stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, My, mine's fine. I don't know. I've been having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of a lot of people are kind of frustrated with the way that these emulators are like reviewed because uh but but it kind of makes sense why they're reviewed that way. Like some people will review it and be like, it's got these problems, but it plays this really good and like you can get it for this. And those problems that it has are kind of game breaking for a lot of consumers. <laughs> so like they kind of gloss over the things that like really suck about it. Mm-hmm. But I mean it it just it's just the it's just the opinion of the guy who's reviewing it, I guess. So some of these people are really into those emulators. Yeah. Well, not to mention the breadth of games you can play, and if you don't so happen to try one that's whatever, not your cup of tea, but is popular with a lot of people, and that one for whatever reason runs like shit, it's like great. Yes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Metascension asks, "What's the first thing you're installing on your Steam Deck when it arrives?" Ooh, I didn't think about that. For me, it's probably Warzone. I want to see how that runs. I don't know how much I would play that. Oh, also, I'm gonna to try to like sideload like emulators and stuff. But uh, yeah, th- 
I don't this know. is going to sound really dumb to some people because it's not going to be something that like pushes the system in any kind of interesting way. Uh, but I'm probably going to install a bunch of like top-down RPGs, like the recent Pathfinder and that kind of stuff, because I can't imagine those are going to play comfortably on a handheld like that. Mm -hmm. So I want to see how it does, because if I had the ability to take the kind of stuff on the go more often, that'd be great. Uh, well, isn't that like the... Wise... That's probably like one of the markets that they're trying to hit with that thing, is like... Uh... Uh, strategy games and stuff that you can only get on like a like PC, but yeah. now you can have it in your in your backpack. Yeah, the problem though is that part of the reason why a lot of those games tend to only be on PC is because keyboard and mouse is an efficient way to control them, and so right. it's great to have a device that'll run it in handheld. But can I actually play it in a way that feels comfortable and not frustrating? It, it seems That's like the they question. tried with the trackpad and stuff, with the two dueling trackpads yeah. and the touchscreen or whatever, but uh. I mean, yeah. they they tried just, that with the Steam how... controller, and that didn't really pick up. Uh, yeah, I hated those. <laughs> um, who else? We'll take like one or two more here. Um, Edward Bova says, "So, what do you think about the fans reporting about Ocarina of Time to, on PC, reverse engineering it, and and uh, there fans have ported Ocarina of Time to PC, and it's like ninety percent done." Uh, I would. I almost put that article in here, but I was like, "This, it's not really a." I mean, you don't want to be the guy that gets them shut down. That's, exactly. You know, you just, yeah, and here we are. Here we are. I don't think it's really like news that they have it ninety percent done. Like we already knew they've been working on it. And they made like really big advancements. Uh, but uh, it's another one where I'll believe it when I see it. Like once it's done, it's done. Like let's we don't have to uh, hype it up too much. And then he also goes on to say, Bob. Bob would be a coffee glazed donut. I didn't think about that. And Kevin would be a glazed sour cream donut. Ew. Interesting choice. That's y'all know I'm like Mexican, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Why couldn't I be like a garlic knot donut then? Ooh, tasty. You know? I would uh, you know? Garlic. Yeah, that sounds like a tasty donut. <laughs> <laughs> and then he linked a YouTube video. What, what are we doing? What's happening here? Ocarina of Time gets reverse engineered. Oh, it's game explain. Mm. Anyway, uh, one more. Ready for that blizzard, Bob? What? Oh, no, don't tell me there's a blizzard. Uh, how come weather.com sucks? Is it Saturday? No. I bet you. I bet you're really missing out over there, Kevin. <laughs> Look, man. The trade-off we have is it's beautiful weather all the time, but I have to live with the fact that at any given moment the fault line decides to go, and it just all falls apart. You know, like it just the San Andreas fault will someday be the end of all of us. But until <laughs> then, the weather is correct. True. That's a very good point. <laughs> Uh, Although I will say we actually had a crazy windstorm like three days ago that took out a bunch of power lines and caused like huge trees to block traffic. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like uprooting them out of the ground. Uh, I'll take this as the last question. Uh, Volero says, uh, "Do you think Xbox will add games that require other subscriptions like World of Warcraft to Game Pass?" So do you think? We'll have Game Pass with an additional subscription on top of that for like something like World of Warcraft. That's interesting, right? Because that's like a weird problem you have to counter. I mean, it... I didn't consider. I didn't I, think that... that World of Warcraft is going to be acquired. Right. Yeah. Okay. My my gut reaction to this, right, is you approach it kind of like how a lot of MMOs have like a starter edition versus a full one, mm -hmm. where whatever as part of game pass you can have a single character and get through this much content uh but you still have to buy the expansions or whatever and then there is the premium version or whatever where you do pay this additional fee on top and that unlocks all this extra stuff that that's just my knee-jerk reaction hearing that concept that's where my brain goes is you have like a limited but playable version of the experience as part of the greater service and then there's the here's why you should give us an extra eight bucks a month or whatever I I uh I can't imagine there's m that much overlap between people who you know spend 
hundreds of dollars on World of Warcraft and people who have a Game Pass subscription. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just roll specifically World of Warcraft. I wouldn't be surprised if they just roll that in. Uh, other subscription services, I don't know what else there is. The only one that's like prominent that I can think of right now is World of Warcraft. Yeah, because Overwatch is just buy to play, right? Yeah. Um, Diablo is just buy to play. Uh, like, Star Wars: The Old Republic. Job. Oh no, they could go the Old Republic route with WoW and Game Pass. What was the Old Republic route? I don't. Remember. Oh, they didn't they just make it free to play or something? That's because nobody played. I it. think it's like. I think it's the same thing as the Elder Scrolls setup, where it's like, yeah, you pay for expansions, but the base game has no online fee. But then there's like the premium membership, whatever, where you pay however much a month, and that unlocks like infinite bag storage or bank storage or whatever. I I, I don't know the specifics, right. but yeah, there's like a buy to play version of the game, and then there's a pay more to get some extra cool stuff. Yeah, they just, yeah, that makes sense. They just add a bunch of stuff. And I mean, that's usually how it goes like when they release one of these things like in the very beginning, if you if you get in in the beginning, you have to pay a lot and then they like open it up to everybody and they're like, "Well, if you paid a lot, you get a, uh, like unlimited storage and like all these fancy trinkets and like in-game currency and whatever." Um Sorry, we wish more people bought it right away. <laughs> <laughs> Valera also says they also own Elder Scrolls Online, but the subscription is optional. Yeah, that's what I was saying where it's it's free to just like play the game. I mean, you have to pay for the expansions and like the actual game content, but there's no monthly fee unless you want to be like a, I don't know the term for it. It's like a premium Elder Scrolls membership where you get this content added on and this is accessible and whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, 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 I never considered these other subscription services that they now have to figure out what to do with. That's interesting. Uh, anyway. need to compete. The last one I'm going to read is Malta, who says, I like turtles. Anyway, thanks, guys, for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Kevin, for being here, uh, especially on such short notice. I appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. Glad to be here. Guys, you all know where to find Kevin. Uh, oh, Christine's in the chat. Hi, Christine. <laughs> it's my name. <laughs> uh, uh, YouTube.com slash Kevin Kenson. Uh Go check that out if you haven't already. You all should already, though. I think uh, you're definitely in the top of like the overlap that I have on YouTube when you like check the like the, the you know what channels people yeah, watch. No. I think my number one is Austin Evans. That's funny. Yeah, I I yeah. think Austin's pretty. I don't know if Austin's number one for me. Spawn Wave's really up there. Uh, the official Nintendo channel I think is somewhere in the top ten. Uh, you're yeah. definitely there, of course. So is Wood. Yeah. Yeah, Wood is. Wood might be number one, or it might be Austin Evans. I know Austin Evans is like absurdly high. Like I, I, I was not expecting that. Um, but yeah, you're up there, and so is the original Nintendo channel, or whatever. So there's a lot of overlap. So I'm sure YouTube is showing you both of our videos. Um. Anyway, again, thank you for being here. Uh, uh. Right now, we're gonna raid uh AJ. So go watch him play Smash Brothers. I believe. Yeah. It's is it open? Ranking every item in Smash Bros. Oh my god, I hate it. Uh, go check out, go say hi to AJ, and uh, I will see you later. I don't know if I'm going to stream tomorrow. I got a lot of work to do, uh, but uh, and I don't know when Will's going to be back, so who knows? There might be a guest next week. Also, see you later, guys. Bye. Later.